Okay. <laughs> Fantastic. Okay. So tonight we have Tanya Fulmer in the hot seat. We will be discussing um, dating stereotypes and things that uh, when we don't quite fit the mold of what people think the perfect stereotype is. And interestingly enough, Celeste's daughter has kind of found this to be the case even amongst young single adults at BYU. And yep. it's mm -hmm. just, it's really crazy how much people kind of feel like you need to fit into a certain box. Yep. And uh, so that's one thing we're going to be talking about tonight. Um, John Brailsford, Dr. Brailsford will be with us tonight uh, to help the discussion. He's running a few minutes late, so he'll be joining us here soon. Um, but in the meantime, so just as kind of a, I wanted to, to address one thing real quick because I know the question has arisen before. Um, why do we do this podcast? Kind of what's the purpose for those who are just joining us? Uh, probably the best example I could give that kind of answered that question is I was talking to another single adult yesterday who he says he's been a member of the church for 31 years. He's a little older and he's been single the entire time. And wow. he said he cannot count the number of times where good intentioned, as he put it, married men have come along and ruined a good singles program. Because simply put, they just don't understand the issues. People who've gone through, who are kind of, I got off my mission, I got married right away, we jumped right into it, and I've just never gone down that road. They don't quite know sometimes what to say. And that's not to say these guys are bad guys. I think they're probably well-intentioned. But with the church now being more than 50% single um, for the adults, these kind of discussions are ones that I think there's a lot of things going on in the church where they just don't quite know what to do, how to do the programs, what people are struggling with, what people are facing. These are sort of things that where it is our world that we're dealing with real time, and it gives us an opportunity to have these real discussions and talk about issues that we're all facing uh, to one degree or another. I can't tell you how many times we've done these podcasts and people have come on feeling like they were alone, that they were struggling with something. And sure enough, they found one of the episodes we did and they're like, somebody else is struggling with that too. Welcome to the party, right? We're all sort of struggling with this together. So that's kind of the purpose of this podcast to get on to not only meet new people like Tanya tonight, which will be fantastic, but to have an honest discussion about things that we're struggling with, things that we're facing, things that we as single adults in the church are just trying to figure out to get our lives kind of where we want them to be. I'm sure most of us want to be not single, married, or whatever that might be. Some of us, maybe we're just waiting and we're just kind of looking for a little time in between a bad breakup. Whatever that case might be, it's nice to feel like we're not alone. So that's my spiel on that tonight. Having well, said then. that, <laughs> having said that, Tanya, welcome. Thank you. All right. Well, so tell us a little bit about you. Tell us where you live. I, I've never met you before. So I, though, I always say they're my favorite ones because it's a natural getting to know you session to begin. <laughs> yeah, sure, sure. So I live in Caldwell, Idaho. Okay. For those of you who are familiar with the Treasure Valley, it's on the Oregon side of the Treasure Valley. Mm -hmm. uh, you leave Caldwell and essentially you're in Ontario, Oregon about 20, 25 minutes later. So um, I moved here from Washington State actually um, in 2007. And prior to that, I lived in Salem, Oregon. So um, I love it here though. Lots of blue skies. So um, yeah. I have five kids and um, my oldest is married. A kind of funny story there. He was one of the last ones to get married before the temple shut down with COVID. So oh, nice. Gotcha. Yeah. And wow. they made me a grandma this year. So that's uh, congratulations. Oh, it's the best. Seriously. It is the best. Um, when they have poopy diapers, you can give them back. Like, hey, I get the No, you're you not wrong. <laughs> Oh. And when there's, when there's, although, okay, I am the kind of person that when they're screaming, I feel bad for the parents because they have to deal with it all the time. So I just walk around with the baby, but, um, oh, uh, good grandma. but 
and so fun. Awesome. Fun. So for all of those grandparents soon to be, or those with little kids, yep. invite Tanya over. She'll take. That's it right. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's my grandkids. I'm not yeah. sure about other people's. <laughs> Are you the type that on like an airplane you'll help somebody that has a crying baby? <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm kind of, I just have, yeah, I have a strong mothering instinct. That's I, awesome. I kind of mother the single sometimes, honestly. So, you know. Ah, gotcha. That's good. Sometimes they need to be mothered. <laughs> You're not wrong. <laughs> that's great. So what part of Washington did you live in? And how long did you um, live there? I lived in Washington. So originally, um, after my ex-husband finished uh, college, we moved up there to Olympia. Uh, we okay. lived in West Olympia. Uh, he was a, a, a lobbyist, so we needed to be close to the Capitol. Um, then we moved back down to Oregon. He was put on active duty. We moved back down to Oregon. And then when we moved back, we ended up buying a house in a little town called Shelton. Mm -hmm. um, people who are familiar with Washington might know. Yeah, old logging town. Yep. But uh, so I lived there for a couple of years and then, then moved out here. Great. I live in uh, Vancouver, Washington, so I know the area okay. well. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Beautiful area. I loved it. loved it. Yeah. I don't know if you've been back recently, but it is like homeless city central here. It's crazy. I, so. I haven't been back for a while and, and see, it, it makes me really sad watching the news, to be honest with you. Now I have to say though, I was never one to be, when people would come visit me and they'd be like, let's go to Seattle. I'd be like, okay. I'll take you to Seattle. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I, I actually lived in Seattle for four and a half very, very long years. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wasn't my cup of tea just because yeah. it was so gloomy. I just couldn't deal with all that. So, yeah. And so I'm, I'm just, I'm more of a, I'm not a, a big city girl. I, I'd like to be out in space, even though. Not space, space. I was <laughs> like, you want to go like on the space shuttle. Go yeah. Right, right. No, yeah, no, for sure. Well, if you're out there in Caldwell, so I, my, my work takes me out to the Boise area. So I know that okay. area pretty well. And uh, Caldwell's kind of nice. I've got one clinic that I visit kind of way out there. And it's mm -hmm. a little bit of a drive. Just kind of turn on the radio, sit back, relax. It's going to be a minute, but yeah. yeah. I like it's it growing like crazy though. Oh yeah. Crazy. We have crazy housing issues over here right now. So isn't yeah. that like everywhere though? It seems like everywhere the housing is just going nuts. So yeah. Especially away from the West coast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, Portland's still exploding. Well, I, oh. you know, I don't know about Portland, Portland, but all the areas around it. Uh -huh. So, I mean, you know, I'm right across the bridge from Portland. Yeah. So as the crow flies, it's like 10 miles to downtown Portland. Or so. Oh, yeah. yeah. And uh, it is just, it's nuts everywhere. Mm -hmm. Everywhere you're going, people are like, if they have any sort of land, they're splitting it up. Like, oh, yeah, I'll sell that off, make a million bucks. And, oh, my gosh. Let them subdivide it for a little bit. So it's just crazy. It's very crazy. Very crazy. Yeah. So. so did you move to Boise or, the, well, I should say the Boise area called well with your ex then is that kind of what I did ever since okay I did um yeah I my so my parents that's uh, kind of a my parents moved to Salem um when I was a junior in high school so uh, my little sister she's 12 years younger than me mm -hmm. and uh mm -hmm. she's deaf and they wanted to it was time for her to go to school and um they wanted to send her to um, a school for the deaf but here we lived in Idaho at the time in the Meridian area and uh, they didn't want to send her to Gooding. Gooding's a, a boarding school, basically, unless you live in Gooding, which there weren't very many jobs in Gooding. So we ended up moving to Salem. And so my parents moved back after my sister, a couple years after my sister graduated. And so they were here and um, we, so we came to be closer to family, especially I needed a support system at the time. So. Sure, sure, sure. Okay. So you've kind of moved around between Oregon, Washington, and Idaho, it sounds like your whole life. Yeah, and I lived in Utah for quite a few years, so. Oh, <laughs> wow. Okay. <laughs> so you've kind of done the Pacific Northwest tour and then like, yes. then so. Yes, I have, I yeah. have. But I was born in Idaho Falls, so I am an Idaho native. Oh, there you oh, go. wow. You know, right. you say that very proudly. I like that. I do, because, you know, it's a thing here. <laughs> 
<laughs> I, I've never, usually people like try to whisper that. So that's great. I think nope. everyone should be proud of where they come from. Great. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Representing. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Love it. Awesome. <laughs> so five kids, how long ago did things kind of, kind of go a little bit sideways for you? Um, well, so in Washington, we separated for a period of time and then we're back together. And then, um, it was about four or five years after we moved here. So, um, 2012 was the year. Okay. And so he, uh, left in February, his mother, and he was from Salem as well. So, um, so his, his, uh, mother had cancer. And so he decided to, instead of stay here, he decided to go take care of her and, um, then he was going to move back here, but, but never ended up doing that. Um, so by the end of uh, 2012, uh, everything was final. And so I've pretty much been, not pretty much, I have been a single mom. Actually, I, I'd say since he left, because in that time, um, there's only a couple times a year where he would come and see the kids. So it's been me pretty much 99.5% of the time. So. Gotcha. Do they have a strong relationship with them now, now that they're a little older or? No, it's, it's, it's kind of a sad story. Just, um, he's, he's, he's got some, he's had some issues and, and, you know, he's been working really hard, um, on, on his mental health and, and whatnot, but there, when, when there, when there goes to be too long a periods of time, we'll just put it this way too long a periods of time without seeing your kids, they just kind of become a little apathetic after a while. And it, it's, it's unfortunate, but um, uh, I fully support them having a good relationship with them. Absolutely. He could see them whenever he wants to. And so I just, they're all old enough now um, that I kind of leave that up to them. I don't step in the middle. I, I, I really try to, um, whenever they say, those things like he doesn't love us. I say, no, he does. He just, you know, he has He's his got own way of showing it. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, yeah. yeah. So we've just done the best we can and worked really hard and got myself to a good place. So. Great, great, great. I just want to welcome John. He's uh, with us tonight, just joined in. So welcome, John. Uh, so oh we- my. I was tearing through the streets of Logan, Utah. <laughs> Trying uh, to get home. <laughs> just to get here to see what's going on. So well, thanks this for inviting me. Yes. Yeah, so. well, we are super happy to have everybody on tonight. So John brings a whole new level of expertise and understanding Good. to some of these issues that me, kind of just the layman, you know village idiot doesn't get half the stuff so you know whatever whatever kind of things i stumble over john can be like okay let me just tell you how this really works here yeah yep half of it comes from fancy pants book learning and half from being a total idiot you know a little of everything you know so it's good to learn both ways yeah yeah you know we stumble through it right i i prefer book learning though yeah (laughs) (laughs) learning from others is better there you go Oh, for sure. So, okay. You know, it's interesting and, you know, John's probably had quite a bit of experience with this, but my feeling is with a parent, especially someone who's kind of taken some time away from the kids growing up, Uh my feeling is that kids are, they're kind of just creatures of routine. And if the routine becomes dad's not really around that much, then it's kind of hard to reestablish that routine. That's what I've observed. So yeah, I agree. Uh-huh. Yeah. I think that was one thing with my divorce that actually was a benefit that my husband traveled all through the week anyway, and he was only home on the weekends. So when the division happened and he wasn't, you know, he wasn't in the house every day anyway. So it was uh-huh. kind of like a little bit, I mean, if there's a tender mercy in there somewhere, that would have been the one yeah. thing that he, he wasn't a part of their everyday in and out routine so I think it's the opposite though too because I think one thing that I I noticed for um I think out of sight out of mind makes it easier for the absent parent to 
continue that situation. Do you know if that makes oh, sense? Yes. Oh, so, does. so for sure it's for the kids, but then it just, it's just compounds by the fact that you, we just go through our days. I mean, we all have these days where we've got a lot to do and we just do stuff. And I'm sure by the end of the day, he's probably like, Oh, I didn't text the kids or call the kids. And yeah. two months later, it's like, Oh, okay. I better do that. Yeah, so. absolutely. Yeah. No, I think it, uh, you, that's absolutely right. Sometimes it's just life gets going at a, hundred miles an hour. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if things aren't happening at a certain time or a certain way, then it becomes yeah. easy. Like, well, I'll just do it tomorrow. And then tomorrow right. is also a hundred miles an hour. And then the next day and the next day. So it gets real easy to kick that can down the road. And if oh, it's your own kids, unfortunately, you know, that, mm -hmm. that affects neg negatively on them, especially as they get older. Yeah. So mm -hmm. yeah. it could <laughs> also be like, one thing I've learned is that in my work is that it's probably 20 reasons of which we see three. Yeah. You know? yeah. And because it can also be shame because mm -hmm. I haven't called them in the last two months and now I'm ashamed, or it could be, I'm depressed. It could be, I'm anxious. It could be, I'm angry. Mm -hmm. I, you know, maybe I don't want to associate with their mom or dad in any way, which cuts me off from my kids, but I, I just don't want to deal with that relationship. So I don't want to deal with any of the relationships in that house. You know, yeah. I'm not saying any of that's right or wrong. It's just, there's a lot of stuff going on under the surface sometimes. Oh, sure. Lots of layers to it. Absolutely. Yeah, that's an interesting point. I did, uh, I'm kind of big on reading about NDEs or near-death experiences. I, you know, you always have to have your gospel feet underneath you, but I enjoy kind of seeing and, <laughs> listening to i listened to some of the youtube ones where they talk about it and reading some of the books and i just kind of get a general flavor of what's going on and i re remember one experience where a guy was talking about his dad who had left him when he was younger and he always had this like built up resentment like towards his father for leaving the whole family and when he had this experience um he was able to kind of see through his father's eyes, so to speak. And mm -hmm. he saw that his dad had struggled with alcoholism and he was so embarrassed and so ashamed of his own life that he felt unworthy to be around the family. And so he chose to kind of remove himself from the family mm -hmm. just to kind of, you know, set things on a different path for them. Yeah. And so that's not to say what he did was right or wrong, right. but it just goes to speak to John's point that, you know, there is a whole list of reasons why things happen that sometimes we don't have the full picture. And if we could take a step back and really see through somebody else's eyes, I think we might have a whole different view of them. Mm -hmm. So, and I, and I think if we do that and don't wait until the next life to do that, <laughs> right. uh, giving grace in this life, honestly, lifts a huge burden off our shoulders yeah. and helps us to, to be a better version of our own selves. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Amen to that. Yeah. And what's sad about it is oftentimes it's the good parents who feel ashamed and cut themselves off. And sometimes it's the really unhealthy parents who demand to have contact. And it's like, dang it, I wish we could switch that, you know? Well, right. uh, <laughs> good parents can see their faults, whereas the bad parents tend to not see their issues. So right. the good parents going to feel guilty because they have faults and made mistakes. I can so, totally see that yeah, happen. It leaves us like um, trying to protect them from the unhealthy parent or trying to um, like find a way to get them with the healthy parent, you know, and it's just not happening. So both of them are sad. Absolutely. So ten, well, we're talking 2012, right? Is that when right. the course was finalized? Okay. Yep. So yep. nine years, almost going on mm -hmm. 10 next year, mm -hmm. you've been kind of in this crazy singles world and mm -hmm. trying to figure it out. And tell us a little bit about how that's been in Idaho. I know for myself, being in Portland, <laughs> I think people feel like there are very few options here, right? So Oh, hey, my ex found an option there, though. So, oh, wow, <laughs> nine months after we were divorced. So, okay, <laughs> can't be that hard. Yeah, well, I don't know. It's you know different for everybody. How's that going? <laughs> Somebody mm -hmm. say that. Um, they're divorced. 
Yeah. That, <laughs> there you go. I can't believe it. Yeah. Surprise, surprise. Right. Yeah. Okay. Anyway. Um, so the single scene here. So I honestly, um, it took me almost a year to go to the scene, to, to go to a singles activity. Um, and the first was, one I went to was a dance. Was that because you were scared or you just needed some time to heal? Um, I, I needed a lot of time to heal. Um, it was okay. a lot of years prior to the divorce that I had to process. Um, and so I felt like I needed to heal, but then also like you're in this place that you never thought that, that you never wanted to be. Yeah. Um, and you know, you have the dream when you're a kid, of, you know, a little girl, especially of getting married in the temple and, and, um, Happily honestly, mine after. was, yeah, forever after. And, and we didn't even get sealed in the temple until, cause he'd been married previous to me. So, um, <laughs> Uh -huh. so I so he he did not we didn't even know what clearance was at the time we all know what clearance is now it's like it's a thing but when I got married back in 1996 um it was a shock we go to set the appointment at the temple they're like well do you have clearance you know has he either been married before and anyway um and so we even weren't sealed until 2000 um so so that was even already like not so my wait, plan wait, wait. let me just clarify so you guys show up at the temple at 90 in 96 and they're like wait a second you haven't been cleared yet and so no you no no, no. we didn't show up on? to the temple we called to get the appointment okay okay, oh, okay. So, <laughs> all right i was yeah, like wow yeah. that, that would have been stink. awkward <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that was so awkward <laughs> one of the patrons asks you so uh oh, that you got your life recommend like what <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, so yeah, so my so my dream was already kind of weird, and um, mm -hmm. so let's see, single scene here though. Um, when I first got into the mid single scene, uh, it was actually we had a really great group. Um, one of the things that I've noticed because now I've been in, have been in this scene for a long time, uh -huh. it kind of like ebbs and flows. Um, and it really, a lot of times depends on, um, sometimes it's just a few key people. Um, those kind of people that are kind of like, I don't know how you describe them. They're, they're just those people that are just like, they have this energy about them that everybody wants to be around. Mm -hmm. Same sex, opposite sex. You know, everybody just wants to be around them because they're friendly, they're inclusive. Um, they include everybody. They invite people to things. They're not... Um, you know, you, you get those clicks when you're on the downflow of the ebb, you get those clicks. And so it takes those people. I was lucky to get into the group when they were on this, the up. And so I had a really good experience once I did finally go, um, got some really good friends that um, I'm still dear friends with to this day. And to me, that was what I was looking for initially. I was looking for um, friends. Friends, people who understood, who knew what I was going through. I was really lucky that I had a very, very, very supportive ward. Um, and so I'm not one of those who had the experience of like I was shunned or anything like that. I had an extremely supportive ward. And um, I I don't know how I would have made it through without that. So I'm, I'm extremely thankful for that and recognize that I'm, I'm one of the lucky ones, honestly. But um, so having that support system and go um, of the mid singles um, was was phenomenal. But then people start to kind of get married, or they move away, and then other people come in yeah. and things kind of fizzle out. And um, I backed away uh, for for a few years, and recently actually have just gotten going back again. And um, so, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. <laughs> there, there's, there, it's, it's kind of a unique, a, a unique experience and situation. And plus I've technically aged out of mid singles at this point. Oh, yeah, so have I. So yeah. Yeah, long oh, I think I, I watched your thing. I am older than you. So <laughs> you're not the oldest You're older than today. me. Ooh. I am. Yay. <laughs> Celeste always feels like the old. I know. I'm always like the old lady. So that's awesome. That, so much older. That's why you invited me back. That's right. I need to have that cushion. <laughs> like, uh, yeah. Here. I got John. <laughs> he, he's leading the pack right up at the top. Yeah. 
Yeah, um, I have to I have to agree with you, Tanya. Like when I started into the singles world, I I was like you. I kind of just entered because I just needed to be around people who I that could understand. Yeah. I was just looking for some girls to go out and have lunch yeah. with. Like mm-hmm. I need because all my friends were still married and they were trying to be supportive, of course, mm-hmm. but they didn't relate. They didn't understand, right? And so right. yeah, it it was to find people who I could relate to and they could relate to me, but it was really, for me, I had been married almost 25 years. And so it was really a shocker. Oh, sure. (laughs) I was like, it's kind of a crazy little underworld. (laughs) Yeah, but it, it was, it was, that's what I wanted. I wanted friends as well. So, and there's that interesting balance that you have to find, especially when you have kids. Um, and I, I'm, a, I'm one of those kind of people that I sit back and watch people a lot. Like I said, I said earlier, like I'm totally fine getting up in front of a class and teaching a class and no problem whatsoever. Um, but going to those social things, I always had to have my friend to go with me or I didn't want to go because I felt <laughs> awkward going by myself. But, um, oh gosh, now I've lost my train of thought. That happens, you know, you get older. Okay. Goes, I, um, <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> It will come back to me at some point. I have one but... of those friends that I have to, I'm like, are you going to this? Are you playing volleyball? Are you going to the dance right. or whatever? And if she's right. not, I'm like, yeah. <laughs> I'm not oh, it's balance. There we go. That's what we were talking about, balance. So I would, I would watch and I would see some people that like almost every night of the week, they had to, they had to go do something. Um, and, you know, some of those people would only do it if they didn't have their kids. And then there would be other people who would do it whether they had their kids or not. And sometimes there'd be activities where kids were invited. Sometimes there'd be, you know, a lot of times there'd be activities where kids weren't. Um, I found myself um, definitely not doing as many things. I'm actually doing more things now because my kids are older. So there's a balance that I, I found that you kind of had to have to make sure that you were, you were filling your own cup, but not taking away from your family. Does that make sense? Yep. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So what do you think the difference is for the singles program when it ebbs and flows like that? What changes? Do you think it's just all those people that are kind of the the driving force behind it, get married or sort of move away or whatever? I think, I think one of the things that, that we all need to be very aware of, um, we all need support and we're all going through different things at different times. Um, some of us are dealing with depression. Some of us are dealing with, um, um, like I have a special needs son. Um, some of us are, um, are, ha- are having really exciting things happen to them. So we have sometimes some negative, negative things going on and some positive things. And I think sometimes when there, get, there gets to be I'm trying to say this without being offensive. How's that? <laughs> it's okay. Just be blunt. Sometimes, okay, I'll be blunt. Well, sometimes there gets to be a lot of complaining, a lot of poor me, a lot of um, nobody understands me, nobody's supporting me. And, and that brings everything down because then it almost becomes like people kind of get into this thing where they they're almost competitive like oh yeah well you know they they start talking about ex bashing things sometimes and then like oh yeah but my ex did this oh but my ex did that and then it's like oh no but not you know and I if that makes sense so it it becomes Mm -hmm. when there's too much of that it almost feeds on itself whereas if if you get sometimes those one or two people that are those super happy, positive people, and it really can help bring about uh, more, I don't know, positivity. Joy, positivity. Yeah. Yeah. But it can take you the other way too. Yeah. It really can. And uh, yeah, I've noticed that it, there's just some places I need to leave, you know. Mm-hmm. And there's other, other places I don't ever want to leave. You know, it's just, it's just a great, great influence on me. So. Yeah, absolutely. You're sitting around a table at Sherry's that, well, they close at 11 o'clock now on the weekends. Did you know that anyway? <laughs> but sometimes you can go into Sherry's to he- eat just a piece of pie and you're there for three hours. Those are the kind of people that, you know, yes. you want to be around. 
Yes. I love eating pie for three hours. Like, Absolutely. I could take out a pie and a half in three hours. <laughs> Just bring the whole pie. We're going to be That's, here a while. <laughs> yeah. I got three hours. So right. don't rush me. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's funny because we had a program here and we've talked about this before on the show, but um, basically we built it up. We started with nothing. Um, it was kind of a YSA thing. Once you graduate from the YSA ward, it was 30 till death. Just go into the pool of single adults. Good luck. You're on your own. Take care. Wish you well. And of course, what ends up happening is people kind of take a peek in the room. They look to see who's there. They show up. They're like, you know, a 30 something year old girl. And there's like a 70 year old guy there to dance. They're like, nope, I'm out. Count me out. I'm not going to do this. Especially when the guy is, uh, the guy is basically like hitting on them the whole time. And they're just thinking, uh -huh. this is not for me, right? So we started building up a mid-singles program because we're late to the game here in Portland. We're not like Utah, we're, we're a little more sophisticated. <laughs> We've got these programs figured out. Up here, we're, we're slow learners. So uh, we started kind of this mid-singles program and we built it up so it was huge. We started with a consistent family home evening we had like fun activities, but we tried to make it fun for everyone. And I've noticed in the church, there's a few things that just kind of are universal, right? Like if you set up a volleyball net, for some reason, people will come. Like they, <laughs> in the church, volleyball is kind of like this thing that people, it just attracts people. And of course, food, right? Like you have to have food. It's kind of like we're little ants, we're attracted to it. Like we just started, oh, there's food there. Okay, fine. Well, if they're going to have food there, then I'll show up. But uh, by the way, side note, I always think it's funny when you've got like the brownies there and everybody's like blessing it. So it'll strengthen and nourish your body, right? Like, okay, <laughs> you're going to wake up from this prayer or you're going to open your eyes from this prayer and it's going to suddenly be a veggie tray, right? Like the <laughs> Lord's prayer was answered. So here you go. It's going to strengthen and nourish your body. <laughs> All the or, or limit the damage. You right. Know, yeah, right. Don't exactly. hurt me as bad as it takes, as bad as it looks like it's going to hurt me. Right. That brownie will not cause diabetes when you eat it after you've prayed over it. You're good. Right. <laughs> well, chocolate never does. No. No. So we had this program that we built up and it got huge, right? Like we would have an FHE and we'd have like 200 people show up sometimes. And this is in the Portland area. So you can, wow. there's a lot fewer people to, to, choose from but people started coming from all around because there was that energy you talk about right mm -hmm. there was like things happening and people were like okay they showed up they poked their head in the door because you're a little shy like haven't been to a singles function in a year or whatever and is there going to be something there for me and when they poke their head in they're like okay well there's a volleyball net but some people aren't playing volleyball some are doing like board games some are doing this and there is food and so there's kind of something for everyone. So mm -hmm. I feel good here and I had a good time and I want to go back. Right. And what ended up happening, just as you described, is those people who were kind of driving the show ended up either moving away or getting married. And then some of those people who had the negative energy were like, well, gosh, it's a real big thing to set up a volleyball net. So we're not going to do that. And bringing treats every week. We don't need to do that. That's a little much. And having a spiritual thought every week that's like meaningful, that's a little much. Maybe just somebody read a scripture. So they start kind of shaving off all those mm -hmm. main components, right? And before you know it, poof, right? They're yeah, down to like eight people showing up and stuff like right. that. If that, and it's just the same group every time. And then people poke their head in, they look at it and they're like, nope, nothing for me. And now you're in that mm -hmm. rut again. I feel like with the church, now that they've kind of recognized that they've got this issue going on, that they kind of like need to catch the formula and have something where people are understanding to say, these are the things that make it work. And whether or not we have the right people in place, we need to have this framework in place and yes. continue to do these things that make it successful. And if we do that, even if the people get married off, Yes, it might be a little bit before we can kind of fill a calling or call a new single adult rep or whatever, mm -hmm. but we know what it takes to kind of keep this ball rolling. So that's the hard part. There's nobody, and I don't know if you've ever been to like a ward council meeting or something like that, but 
all too often, if there's a single adult function, it feels like they say, well, yeah, we got that single adult conference coming up in three months. Let's kind of like put an announcement out in the bulletin board. And as soon as it's done, it's like, phew, okay, yeah. we're done with that. Back to our regularly scheduled programs, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's like we're an afterthought. And that's mm -hmm. where people start dropping off. Like, I don't feel like there's anything at church for me. I don't feel like I can go to church and they really care, at least in a family ward, right? I go to church Maybe they'll throw me a bone once or twice a year for some activity. And then they're just like, all right, let's talk about the issues that we're facing. Like these guys over here need marriage counseling and we've got scouting activities and everything else. And if you're not part of that, then, you know, somehow just work your way in and fit in. And it doesn't always work that way. And a lot mm -hmm. of people just leave because they okay. don't feel like they're really having their needs met. So yeah. that's a hard thing. It is hard. It is hard. Well, they killed the mid singles, the official mid singles program here a couple of years ago. So um, I think that really hurt the program here. Uh, there have been some people who've been really um, actively working towards doing some, I mean, COVID also killed a lot of things too. Let's be oh, yeah. real, you know? And so know. there are people who are working towards getting that stuff going again. But right now it's all unofficial stuff. And I think that if we could have an official, more official things, official things, you know what I mean? So that so that they're not just announced on Facebook or if you happen to know someone or, or whatnot, because a lot of people don't know the groups to join, you know, that are gonna tell mm -hmm. them the things to do. And so if we at least have some place for people to go to that, that, and I'm not saying that they all have to be official, but like you said, there's that framework. And, and I think we do have a family home evening here and a come follow me, but I choose not to go to them just because, I mean, I still have kids at home and yeah, not that that's yeah. easy to do with them, but <laughs> it's yeah. funny that, uh, you know, with FHE and things like that, people will, if they've got kids at home, and they show up to an FHE and it's not something that they feel like there's anything there for them. The kids at home become the hugest kind of like, well, I got my kids at home. It's not easy to bring them there. But if it's fun and there's other kids there because people start bringing their kids and they show up and they're like, I felt like there's something for me. That excuse kind of tends to go away. And a lot of people will show up with their kids and like, I want to be there and I'm going to make it happen. Like mm -hmm. you're going to get in the car. I'll get you a happy meal on the way. Whatever we got to do, but we're going. And <laughs> people show up and there's tons of kids. It happens every time, but I get it. Like it's tough. I've got my kids and I've brought them to activities before, you know, um, it just depends on how badly you want to be there. And if it, well, you know, teenagers are tough though, too, for sure. Well, but teenagers <laughs> can also stay home a little bit, right? They're a little easy. Oh, totally. My kids yeah. stay home all the time. I'm just like, I'm going to the picnic. See ya. Right. Mm -hmm. I'll bring you home a hot dog. <laughs> yeah, there's food in the fridge. Figure it out. <laughs> oh, for sure. For yeah. sure. But... Yeah. Well, I want to go back real quick and just kind of ask and clarify a point. So okay. you were getting, you guys got married in 96, you said, right? Yeah. But yeah. you got sealed in, was it 2000? 2000. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I understand if like at the beginning in 96, you're like, oh, we have to get a ceiling clearance. What was the delay of four years for there? Or if, if that's something personal, you don't have to like- No, I, no, it's actually, honestly, I didn't really know. That's one of the things that's kind of weird about that. And I don't know if it's different now because you know, obviously I haven't been married again. Um, well, maybe not obviously, I haven't been married again. <laughs> <laughs> but um so i don't know but i do know friends who they're they've had the process um i even have a friend who she hasn't remarried but she has chosen to have her ceiling canceled and so i'm familiar with the paperwork but um i never we never really i never personally i'm sure he understood but i never totally understood why that clearance was not it was he was denied clearance Oh, so the church came okay. out and said the church know, came out and denied point. his clearance. Okay. And of course, you know, you look back in retrospect and it's like red flag, but I'm, I'm kind of the kind of person that, you know, 
anyway. <laughs> so was it did they give him like a timeline like you have to wait three years or something so like technically that? so when you when your clearance is denied um you have to wait a year so and i'm trying to remember i think we reapplied for clearance but like we just never heard back and never heard back and never heard back and my um my grandfather was a sealer and he kept asking me <laughs> he used to say tanya when are we going to paint your wagon? <laughs> <laughs> and so finally, um, it was my grandparents who actually contacted Salt Lake. Oh, wow. And um, apparently our paperwork had gotten lost or something. I don't know. So after that, it got pushed through pretty quickly. And so we had the three kids seal test. And then, of course, the, the other two were born um, under the covenant. But I understand that process has become much, much easier now. So back I hope so. <laughs> yeah, well, I know. Um, so my ex, uh, she was denied, but they gave her five years that she had to wait. So it was oh, wow. quite a while. Um, and there's different circumstances that sure. require that, you know, like they don't like your spouse hopping sort of thing. Um, mm -hmm. But it was a long time mm -hmm. um, before that could could go down the pike. But I feel like now I've talked to a lot of people who simply, it just goes really quick. Like, I feel like the church would just rather have people get sealed than to kind of go and do this waiting game and things like that. Like, I don't know if there's their thought process on it mm -hmm. is that those extra blessings from being sealed in the temple will help. I'm not 100% sure what the, the difference is, but I just, I know it's easier now. Yeah, it was actually easier for my ex this, the third time around, so. Yeah. A lot of that shifted about eight, 10 years ago and um, including like men can request a, a cancellation now and just, yeah, there were there were a few things. And then the, of course the internet makes it easier to streamline the process as well. Oh, that makes um, sense. The other thing I noticed too is you don't have to wait for a former spouse to offer their perspective. So typically a bishop, whether the bishop knows this or not, of course, because training's an issue, but, um, but a bishop can just say, I'll give you two to three weeks to respond. If you don't respond, we'll move forward, hmm. basically. So, and then usually for a, a clearance, it's like a two to four week process. And for a cancellation, it's like a month and a half, maybe, or two at the most. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Wow. Well. Yeah, I think they, they want to push people through. I don't know now, is it, it, I don't know what the process looks like after COVID because it seems like things are a little slower, but. Well, there's been another policy change that actually affects it. And that is you can get um, married civilly first and then right. get sealed like within, like there's no That's year different. waiting period. Now. Right. Yeah, like the next day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can get sealed the next day. So, um, yeah. So you can get married civilly and then just wait however long it takes to get the clearance or the cancellation. And, and I mean, I think I know some of the reasons for that, but I'm sure there are others. Um, but. Yeah. yeah. So your ex, you were his second marriage. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yep, I was his, oh, sorry, I was his I second was, marriage. <laughs> yeah. I wasn't sure if you were still counting like, well, was it the second? <laughs> no, I was his second. He, yeah. Okay. All right. How long was he married the first time? Were there kids from that marriage? There was one child from that marriage. Um, they were married for, let's see, I want to say they were married for three or four years. Not very long. Okay. Were you close to your stepson or daughter? Um, so I had a really good relationship with my stepdaughter um, up until at one point her mom, so we lived in Oregon and she lived in Oregon too. And we would see her um, have visitation, see her all the time. Um, when we moved to Washington, um, her mom happened to move to Utah as well. Okay. So that really cut down on the visitation. Um, and then her mom got remarried. And at one point, I think when she was 10 years old, she asked to be adopted by her stepfather. And um, my ex chose to let her. Um, and so actually I reconnected with her, interestingly enough, 
um, things kind of just, we went and saw her a couple of times. Um, that was kind of part of the agreement with the adoption that we could still see her, but it just became kind of weird, I guess. I don't know, hard to explain. But after the divorce, I was like, hey, this is this is my kid's half sister. You know what I mean? They need to know her. And so I can reconnected with her. Um, she really wants nothing to do with her her birth father. Um, but but I stay connected with her anymore. Now it's pretty much um, she's friends with my she knew my oldest two um, a lot better than I don't know that it took her. She met my youngest one, I think, for the first time when, when I went and saw her and uh, we went and visited her in Moses Lake, Washington. So, um, so yeah, so I've actually stayed in contact with her. Um, it's interesting though. So here's here. So we have a lot of mental health issues. <laughs> we have a lot of severe anxiety. Um, all of, four of my kids are treated for anxiety, um, and. Um, four of my kids are treated for ADHD. I have one son who's on the autism spectrum, very high functioning, but, um, and interestingly enough, so I thought that I was like crazy, like, what am I doing wrong? And, um, and finally their, their med manager was like, no, I see this in families. Like this is a genetic thing. And so when we reconnected with her, um, she has severe anxiety issues too. So, um, and it's not surprising. My mom has issues with anxiety and depression. And, and so, and he has since, my ex has since found out, well, while we were still together, he found out that he had um, ADHD, was diagnosed with that, but he found out some other issues. So I'm like a lot of things like come together and make sense. So. Yeah. So, so um, oh, go ahead. Oh, go ahead, Celeste. No, I, I hope I don't derail. I'm just curious. You had mentioned that your grandparents were, your grandpa was a sealer. So yes. does that mean that you, do you come from a long line of, of, of members or do you yeah. have a convert or, so you're just born in both? The well, both my, so my grandfather's line, the one who was a sealer, um, uh, he, so John um, Solomon Fulmer, is um, actually was a friend of Joseph Smith, Prophet Joseph oh, Smith. Wow. So, so it goes back that far. On my mom's side, we have some that go back that came across the plains. But then on my mom's side, we also have um, her grandmother. Um, my grandmother was a baby when her when my mother's grandmother um, immigrated and grandfather immigrated from um, the Netherlands. Oh. So, so we kind of have both. But Did you serve a mission or? Did I serve a mission? Yeah. <laughs> well, that's a whole nother story. Uh -oh. I had a mission call. <laughs> oh, did you? And you I just had a mission to call you? to Japan. Oh, cool. And, and a guy asked me to marry him. Yeah. Not my ex-husband. Oh. The guy asked me to marry him. And um, so I ended up giving up my mission for this guy. And then he decided not to marry me. It was, that was a really. I'm sorry. It, it is what it is. <laughs> I didn't mean to. to <laughs> no. it up, but. Well, now that Celeste has poured water on the fire, that's great. Let's <laughs> get this woman a ticket to Japan. Let's I know, for real, huh? <laughs> no, but funny Aww. thing is, is, later on down the line, my aunt and uncle were called to serve in the office of the Fukuoka Japan mission, and um, wow. which was the mission I was called to. Um, so I guess I'm like, I guess... Uh, somebody needed to be there for whatever reason so and she brought me back a, a kimono so i'm good now <laughs> oh that's just like serving you got a kimono that's fine right, right. <laughs> so after, the, after the, the engagement fell through you didn't decide to go back obviously no um, it was a it was a it was a really kind of painful crazy period of my life um i think eventually that's kind of what i think I've analyzed myself, you know, why did I marry Good. this? You know, you always do. Why, what, how can I marry this guy that had so many red flags and yada, yada, yada. And I think, I think that uh, sometimes, and this is one of the things that, that now I'm very uh, cognizant of and careful of, and maybe too careful, probably too careful. Um, but I think I was just in a state where, cause I was almost 24 when I got married the first time, the first time, the only time I was almost 24. 
and I think I was getting to the point where I felt like nobody wants me, nobody loves me, you know. Yeah, you're so, all washed up at 24. I know, right? In the LDS culture, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we, we you laugh know? now so we don't cry, right? I right, know you right. don't fit it's the mold true. if you're over 24, right? I know, right? <laughs> See, I have a lot of history of not fitting the mold. Oh, not just now. <laughs> So you've now kind of gone to this spot where you went through, you had a hard time, you went and got married anyways, mm -hmm. five kids, which mm -hmm. is fantastic. And you guys were married for if you 2012, um, 16 years, right? Yeah, 16 now. years. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you've been single for nine years now. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about that, because the topic tonight that we're going to be discussing is not fitting the mold. And it sounds like you feel like you don't fit kind of this mold that is expected in the LDS community. And there's lots of molds. We're not just, we're talking like spiritual right. molds, yeah. right. you know, right. like all the molds that we kind of create in our culture. Sure. Right, right. So, I mean, first of all, I just, um, I, I feel like I, I feel like I don't fit the physical mold. Okay. I, I'm, I'm t a little on the taller side. So if I wear heels, I'm taller than like a lot of the guys. Um, and <laughs> there's a lot of short guys. How tall are you? Well, I used to be five, eight and a half, but you know, okay. having kids, you shrink a little bit. So I'm a little under five, eight now. Um, I feel like so not like super life. tall. There are women out there who are like six feet tall. So I'm not like super tall, but even still, you know, like I said, I like to wear heels. If I'm dating a guy who's five, seven, I'm going to be taller than him. <laughs> yeah, if you're dating a guy that's five seven, you wear flats, and you're going to be taller than him. So, that's true. Yeah, yeah. good point. Good point. So, <laughs> so there's that. Um, I just, you know, I've I've got my curves from having having uh, five kids, and um, I'm healthy, but and I'm active, but I don't fit that slender mold. I'm not blonde, long blonde hair, perfectly coiffed. Um, I don't like to go shopping. Is that how the kind of that? coiffed? I for Perfectly some be coiffed. Yeah, I was thinking <laughs> French like coif, coif or something like that. I don't know. That's awesome though. You're, you're very I just artistic. let my curly hair do whatever it wants. <laughs> right. I've got so I don't too. go get my hair done. I you know what I mean? All those kinds of things. So I don't fit that um I don't know. And, and, and I know that a lot of this is totally overgeneralization. I totally get that. Um, but then also I feel like for me, the gospel is extremely important in my life. Um, but I've learned um, a lot about the atonement over the years. I've learned, um, I, I've learned that that's, that's where my focus needs to be. But but then I don't fit that mold of being that super Molly Mormon. Does that so make you sense? mean you've got a brain? Is that what you're saying? Because I feel like if you're Molly Mormon or Peter Priesthood, you simply just, it's like by the book because I can't think for myself. Like sometimes, you know, if my kid's sick and I don't show up to church on Sunday, that's okay, you know? Mm -hmm. Or if yeah. something's happening and everybody's in town uh, that I'm spending time with them instead of being at the ward activity, that's okay. okay. But I feel yeah. like that kind of thing is normal. I think that makes you probably more desirable than less desirable, if that would make any sense to have. No, it, to it, it totally right. does. But, you know, you find that you find those, those, um, like when you have a little bit of a past, it's hard to like, when you find those men who like have never had a past, you know, or anything like that. And you're like, they would totally not understand what I went through. They would have no clue. They would have no idea. They'd look at the tattoo on my foot and they would be like, what on earth? You know what I mean? And oh, you have a tattoo. And, well, never mind. All right. We're going to go ahead yeah. and <laughs> right here. <laughs> hey, I got my tattoo before they were cool. So I got my tattoo before I was married the first time. <laughs> well, so, you know, uh, okay. We're back then. Yeah. It's interesting because I was not active till I was 21. Mm -hmm. So I come with a different bra background mm -hmm. than most. And I've actually, all the guys I've spoken with, they kind of think that that is refreshing because they don't have to deal with 
all the Mormon culture, which is what you were speaking of. The Molly mm -hmm. Mormon usually is the culture. It's right. something where it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's not the gospel. It's kind of like 10 steps beyond it because they want to go to the extreme, right? Usually right. I think it's based in fear, but like, I don't have a lot of that. And um, I don't know. I think people that I, the people I've interacted with have, have actually liked that about me because I'm not so like, you know, don't you dare wear shorts on Sundays or whatever, you know? So, <laughs> Hey, you know, that's legit. Don't be no, no, in the pool. No, 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 my, yeah. Yeah. My aunt and uncle. The water, he'll drown yeah, you. No, their kids never wore shorts. My aunt and uncle's kids <laughs> never wore shorts. And I was like, what? So yeah. I, so. I, well, I, I, I think more than, you know, Tanya, I think pro there are even guys out there identifying with that. You know, I think we all have these, I think after you've been divorced, there's this sense or, or not never married, you know, mm -hmm. for sure. I think there's this sense that, am I good enough? Like, am I, you know, what's missing in me? It may be that men are less likely to say that out loud. Um, but I think mm -hmm. we're, we're feeling it too. You know, am I physically okay? Am I spiritually up to par? Um, mm -hmm. am I, am I emotional an emotional wreck? Cause I feel like people will accept it even less in me, um, than they even would in, in like uh, one of the sisters, you know? And, yeah. um, and so, and, but notice what we do. We just, it's like, we talk ourselves out of <laughs> even trying, <You're> wrong. <laughs> you know? And it's just like, well, I, I just wonder, what if I just showed up enthusiastic, like, you know what, I'm just going to presume I, there might be something actually attractive about me. Um, and, and I'm just going to let that go and quit worrying about it. And I'm just going to get into this experience with this other person and just have a great time, you know, yeah. and, but I get it why it's hard to really let go of some of those. It's almost like we're harsher on ourselves than, than any of our dates are, you know. I think sometimes our messages we give ourselves, like in our head can sabotage us more than other yeah. people having perceived, you know, molds that they think that you mm -hmm. need to fit into. Cause honestly, I mean, I think everybody can have their own mold. I don't care. And if I don't fit their mold, then whatever, but that's hard when we're telling ourselves, mm -hmm. you know, okay, I'm not going to fit people's molds and that I care that I don't fit mm -hmm. in people's molds. Right. So it's kind of like a balance. Like I think, if we come to accept ourselves as is, or well, not as is, because we're all working, right? I'm becoming better, but just realizing that whoever is kind of open to who I am as is um, would be who I'd want to be with anyway, right? Versus somebody who might be trying to reshape me into something that I'm oh, not. Totally, right? totally. Yeah. No, I totally, I totally get that. It's just, I think what, I think what happens though, too, is because I'm the kind of person that, that I go and I totally, I, I'm the kind of person that likes anybody, everybody. Um, it's, it's just, and, and that's how I've always been. But when they're, when you're doing that, sometimes I'd sit back and I watch and I see like girls are talking about going on dates all the time. And I'm like, why are they going on dates all the time? Like I never go on dates. Like seriously, the last date I went on was actually during COVID. <laughs> wow, mask and all. Mask? Wow. <laughs> nope, nope, no mask, no Walk mask. Walk around a park without your mask on. Yeah. <laughs> right, if right. You're not in Idaho, you can get away with that. Here in Portland, they like tackle you. <laughs> right. <laughs> Use a taser on you or something and like throw you in the back of something. Yeah. <laughs> and so, so I think that when when you see that happening and you're like. I don't think I'm a bad person to be around and, and, you know, and, and so you're, you're like, you're trying to have that, like, I have a good attitude about myself and, and, and I have a ton of friends and every time I go to something, there's always somebody there that I know and I can associate with and talk with, but then you stand back and you're like, but how come everybody else? And, and, and then you start to say, you start to analyze because women are terrible at overanalyzing things. <laughs> terrible. At, I mean, good at it. Maybe I should say we're good at overanalyzing things. <laughs> John's probably and you're like, the what's the common denominator? <laughs> okay. She's skinnier than I am. She's, you know what I mean? And so I think that's where that kind of comes from to me more than because I'm like you, I'm like, take me as I am. Like, this is who I am. I'm is you know what I mean does that kind of make sense at all I mean I hate to admit it I think there's even been me in history that was like that uh, pretty shallow and stuff but I've learned my lesson you know I think when it gets right down to it it's the, really is the quality of the person and that connection um mm -hmm. and I think we try to force it sometimes I mean mm -hmm. we have stereotypes about ourselves and about them and uh to me like if I were to use the metaphor it'd be like doing a thousand 
piece puzzle. Mm -hmm. And like, there may only be four pieces that actually fit me. Yeah. But I've been through like 150 pieces and I'm getting really frustrated. Yeah. You know, and it's just like, where in the world is one, just one out of four, just, you know, can I just find this one out of four woman, you know, and mm -hmm. it is for, and I think what helps me is like, just take joy in doing the puzzle. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Even if my piece doesn't fit, you know, like enjoy watching it all come together and every piece that gets put, put in, meaning they get married or they find someone else. It's just, okay, that's just one less piece on the, on the table that I need to be distracted by, you know, and that's okay. So Absolutely. I'm getting closer so, to my piece. That's good. Well, at, like Christina, who we have her on the show every now and then, like that was always her thing. She's like, you know, if my right person is number 100 or whatever, I still have to go through the, the other 99 to get to them, right? I have to go yeah. through the wrong people to get to the right person. But I'm going to play a little devil's advocate here. And this is kind of my of little course. soapbox that I like to stand on. <laughs> she is and so good at that. I am. <laughs> because this is my thing. Because I, I, I kind of have an opinion that I don't think it's shallow of people to have preferences. And I, I, I know I get lamb blasted anytime I put that on on one of these pages but I really don't I think that it's kind of human nature to have a, an initial attraction in some way right you just are looking for right. someone you know your perfect person or whatever like I don't think that that is shallow I think that that's natural because like part of who we are now I think if someone doesn't necessarily fit our initial interest or whatever attraction that doesn't mean that's not the right person for us like we can get to know them and maybe you know they're not as tall as we thought they we would want and it's so you know it becomes like oh, okay it's all right they're not as tall and but they can still be the right person so mm -hmm. i i don't i don't know i kind of just feel like people who have certain likes or dislikes are just get really like hammered on these pages and then people who get on there and be like you know, I just rolled out of bed and didn't do my hair and I'm taking the selfie and I'm saying, Hey, take me as I am. And I don't care. I'm not going to work on even looking my best to try to find somebody. And they're over there, you know, you guys can be shallow and overlook me. I'm like, but are they being shallow and overlooking you? Or, you know, like, I feel like there needs to be some sort of balance. I don't know. I feel like it's yeah. so one-sided and someone had made a post the other day about how you know, they were saying that they weren't looking for a, a eye candy because eye candy wouldn't relate to soul candy. They were saying eye candy and soul candy and that they were, they would rather find some soul candy because the soul candy would see who they are on the inside. And they were saying, because that person is shallow, the, the, the eye candy is shallow. And my thing was, well, wouldn't you saying that someone who looks inside your soul, but like people who are nice looking or something can still be nice people and see the good inside of people. So I felt like they were being shallow by saying people who are eye candy can't be soul candy. Anyway, long story short, I just feel like there's also the other side of the coin that people always kind of like, like mess around with. So what, what say you, what's, what y'all's feelings on this? <laughs> why, why does, yeah. Cause why does it have to be mutually exclusive? It doesn't. Right. right? I don't think it right? does. That's my point. Yeah. yeah. So my translation of that is it's okay to like eye candy as long as you want it with the soul can, a soft soul candy center inside. Right. You know? Exactly. And then I, I'd even rather have like a really solid soul candy center and like really good eye candy, but it doesn't have to be like drop dead eye candy. Yeah. Yeah. And, but they were implying if you were eye candy, you, you can't be soul, soul candy. candy. And, and, and vice I, versa. They were saying if you were soul candy, you can't be eye candy. I'm like, that no, just, that no, doesn't, that's, that's not how it works. So anyway, that's I just wrong. wanted to kind of throw that out there because as much as I feel like, yes, we need to be looking for who's going to accept us, who we right. are. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't think we should try to change for anyone if we're solid and who we think we are. Right. Um, but at the same time, I don't think we should be saying, you're shallow because you don't like me, if that makes sense. I don't no, know. It's, totally it's kind of sense. like a balance. I don't know how to balance mm -hmm. it, but I can, in my head, it seems like there are the yeah. two sides. Yeah. 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 We feel like there's this, 
this notion that we have to have like mutual exclusivity on that. Like it's one or the other, but you can't have both. Like, right. you know, I would rather have both or nothing at all. I can't like, I can't just say, well, you know, for me, I don't want to be physically attracted to them at all, but they like are great for my soul. I don't know that I would be, that's what I would call a, a great friend. You know, I don't yeah. know that I could move forward on something like that. Um, and same thing with me. Like if somebody was like, hey, Everett's great for my soul, but I'm just totally not attracted to him. I'd say, okay, well, maybe we're not the right pair. But mm -hmm. I definitely have yeah. been reverse before. And this is where I have failed in my past relationships is that I go for the eye candy and the soul candy portion is like, you know, a little <laughs> pea eyes or something like that, if it's even there, right? So <laughs> I did put the preference more on the one than the other. And oftentimes my experience that those who have the eye candy in abundance often don't feel like they need to work on the soul candy because they're like, why? It's almost like being rich, right? So if you're rich, it's harder to a rich man. It's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle sort of thing. It's like, why do I need to work on myself? I already have everything I need. I'm good. Life is great. I don't have those struggles that make me a better person. Somebody, and this is my experience, somebody who has plentiful eye candy all too often is like, well, I'm I like, lean on that too much. Yeah. Yeah. So that's just been my experience with it. Um, well, and honestly, at the same time, so I'll say this at the same time, when I, when I look at those guys who are constantly going out with every single eye candy girl that there is in the group, you know what I mean? And they're, mm -hmm. they're blowing through them. I'm like, I don't, I don't, I don't know that I want that though either. Right. I want, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I want somebody who is at least ready to settle down because there's going to be guys who go through that and then they do are eventually ready to settle down. They're in a different place. Obviously they're just kind of, does that kind of make sense? Yeah. On that, I just want whoever I'm going to be with to be learning from the experience. So if she's going yeah. through eye candy guys, I just figure, Hey, she's just kind of working that out. <laughs> And, she, and if she keeps finding out there's no soul candy inside of them, okay, I'll, I'll just be waiting here for you, baby. Um, and, you know, finally she'll get to me, you know, where I'm sort of eye candy, but a little, I, yeah, I would like to think my soul is beautiful, you know, especially in my kimono. So absolutely, I always feel better when I wear a kimono. I agree with Tanya on that. So. Let you me know, ask you a question, Tanya. If you had a guy that was like pure eye candy, he was all muscly and handsome and everything, but he was just dumber than a sack of hammers. And uh, no, no, no. There's I no part can't of do it. Like that's not appealing either. No, I, I, that's actually one of my big, big things. Like I have to be able to have a conversation with somebody like an intelligent mm -hmm. conversation. It's, just to so um, yeah no <laughs> you gotta have some brains up there yeah Good. Oh, yeah totally yep yeah uh, absolutely so when you see these guys that are all you know kind of going around for the eye candy girls and things like that they may not be the right guys for you anyways no and, so, and that and that was kind of my point yeah, yeah. exactly so mm -hmm. yeah you know, I, I love, I heard one time somebody uh, kind of give the analogy that we all have a magnetic personality. It just depends what we're attracting. So people tend to often over example the magnetic personality of this person that's just jovial and the life of the party. And, you know, that's great. They do attract a lot of people, but we kind of attract, there's the Eeyores too, right? They go through life and they're kind of, oh, woe is me. <laughs> and you'll find them eventually like gravitating towards somebody else that's that way. And you're like, well, you're kind of attracting Eeyores in your life that are kind of the, the woe is me type person. So I think that for me, like in my journey, I just came to the realization, like, I'm just going to be happy and let come what may. And if I don't find someone until the millennium, I mean, that was kind of my, my plan in the first place. <laughs> 
I'm like, the millennium will be great because I won't run into all of these problems, right? They're not going to be all <laughs> weird and crazy and like all over the map and cheating on people and things like that. Like I can just have a normal relationship in the millennium. But in the meantime, I'm going to have a lot of fun. I'm going to be happy. I'm going to just go enjoy life and yeah. let come what may and let it sort of attract as it's going to naturally. So that was kind of my my thing. And if I go to an event or to a singles conference and I feel like I don't fit the mold or I'm not kind of, you know, fitting in that little box, you know what? I'm in my own box. I don't care. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I saw, for example, um, somebody posted on the group just in the last couple of days of like, okay, name some show or something that if this person likes that show, they're definitely checked off your list. And I saw somebody put on there like, jackass and things like that i'm like dude i would be so off your list in a heartbeat i don't care if you look like cindy crawford right like i love that show that's just me and i've come to the realization like i just i don't care i'm gonna be me and if someone's gonna have some litmus test and they're gonna say well he doesn't fit in that box you're right i don't fit in your box guess it's not gonna work out have a nice day you yeah know? but i'm happy being me and i'm not going to apologize for that you know, and I see all the time on the groups, people looking for some sort of exclusionary test to say, all right, what's it going to take to cross that person off the list? Like, why don't you just say, what's it going to take to be happy and connect with me? Why do you have to look for things to check somebody off with? Uh, you know what I mean? Yeah. You know, I think if we focused more on like being having unity and being united too as a group and we really then we would see I think a different side of each other other than those checkoffs mm -hmm. does that make sense mm -hmm. yeah. yeah absolutely yeah and and often the things we're checking off aren't the things that really matter anyway um, yeah and I like the idea of letting it come to us um and sort of just being the person that would attract the kind of person I want you know right mm -hmm. Yeah, I think there's a there's an importance of making sure we're the type of person like we can be a complimentary to the type of person we want, right? So right. if we're not working on ourselves, but we want some person that's fully whole and healed and you know emotionally stable, like it's not gonna they're not gonna want us in return if we're a hot mess, right? So we always we have to be working on ourselves and trying to become our best self, whatever that is, so that in return someone who's their best self might be attracted to us and, and we'd make a good couple. Um, I think that's important. And mm -hmm. I think sometimes you're right. I think on those sites, it's all, or those pages, it's all about like the negative. A lot of times, you know, it's all about what someone's not doing or not looking like, or, you know, like all the negatives. And yeah, I think if there was more positive, it would definitely be a better bond as a group. I think. Oh, well, and can I just say one thing that bugs me? Like, I have four boys, okay? And it drives me batty when there is just a bunch of man bashing going on. I, know. <laughs> I mean, not just because I have four boys, but I am sitting here going, ladies, what do you expect if you're gonna sit here and bash the men all the time? And, and, and it can go the other way around too, because there's plenty of women bashing that goes on, all women this. But I'm like, you know, my... I've raised my sons to be really good men. Yep. And um, mm -hmm. and I would like to think that the men out there have mothers who've raised their sons to be really good men. And none of us are perfect. And it just, I don't know. It 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 really kind of uh, I just have to I just have to scroll on by because I'm like, if I say anything, it's gonna be taken wrong because I'm just gonna get on my soapbox. <laughs> By my tongue, by my tongue. Well, I feel like, and correct me if I'm wrong, John, I feel like a lot of that is due to people who have experienced some sort of like negative effect in their last relationship and they're carrying that forward. They're projecting it out saying, mm -hmm. you know, my ex cheated on me. And so now men do this and men do that. And it's just, they let that bitterness kind of override like compartmentalizing what happened to them and saying, this was an isolated incident let's not spread this out over the entire male species. Right. Right. Yeah. I think it's, 
Oh, go ahead, John. Well, it's a combination of two things. It's, they may have really been hurt bad. Like, I, I have no doubt that we've been hurt bad. You know, that both men and women, and we've been hurt by both men and women. We've been hurt, you know. Um, and But it's also, how do I perceive it and how do I respond to it too? So there's how I digest it or how I translate it into what it means for me. And that's the part where I don't care whether you really got hurt bad or you're, you're, you're sort of catastrophizing over that and making it more than it was, or you're trying to deflect from all the damage you did. Here's the thing. If you're still that wrapped up in it, you're not done cooking yet, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. and and those are just, to me, I'm grateful for those red flags. And they're not red flags that have to be permanent. You know, um, it, it might be that they're really great people, but the, the healing process just isn't done yet. And, mm -hmm. um, and then what you get into is sort of the just really myopic um, blinders on of, I, I have to have somebody that would never do this and that always does this. And, mm -hmm. and to me, that is so contrary to following the spirit. I'll just be, we'll just put it out there. If I already have made up my mind that men or women are a certain way, if I've already made up my mind that I must have this, you know, or, or I cannot have that, um, the more of those little requirements you put on people, you just tell the spirit, don't bother talking to me. I already got it figured out. And here's the thing. The spirit wants us to be happy. Like God wants us to be happy. And he might know in his heart, he, he might say to himself, I know that this person, that you'll never marry someone with a tattoo, but they got a tattoo. You'll never marry someone who's over 5'10", uh, but she's over 5'10". You'll never marry somebody over 30 pounds overweight. You, stop it. Because I know this person who does not fit those criteria. And I know because I can foresee I'm the, the only being that can actually read minds and prophesy. And I'm telling you, if you married her, like she would make you the happiest of any other girl out there. And, but I'm not going to force you into that. And I'm not going to try to whisper that to you if you've already written that off. Mm -hmm. And that's sad. That, that, that's a heartbreaker. Yeah, I think that that is important to recognize because I think, again, we have our instant things that we're attracted to, but if we pigeonhole ourselves into only those things, like we're really narrowing our field, right? Like mm -hmm. it's just down to like very few. Um, and I think that as long as we're willing to still get to know people, you know, if we find them funny or witty or like they're smart or whatever it is that we also like, that maybe it's like they're a little short for what I would normally date or whatever. Um, then the spirit's able to be like, okay, like this is this person would work well with you just kind of open your heart and be willing to to let that spirit guide so yeah i think if we're too like string like just so like no it's got to be my checklist and if i don't get them all that i'm not going to go for that person yes. like yeah, yeah. that's mm -hmm. not a good thing so yeah and i have met or dated women who i wasn't initially attracted to but let me tell you personality and confidence and just some qualities they had they really started to seem hot to me. Like I, I don't, and I can't even explain what came over <laughs> me, but it's just like, okay, you are really cute. Like I am really digging you right now. And I didn't end up marrying them, but it was kind of like, I, I, it helped me lose the mentality of having my type. Yeah. I mm. mean, you still have your initial attraction, but you don't For make sure. Sure you have to stay within yeah. that realm. Right. Yeah. Be willing to be, just be flexible and let the spirit teach you and don't be surprised where it takes you. Um, and you might say, well, you know, I really like, you know, curvy women, but I, I'm dating this five foot, even, you know, 105 pound little woman. And that's never been my type, but I'll be dang, man. She is just so fun to be around. And I like, I am just really attracted to her as a person. And after a while, it's like, she actually looks good too. And, <laughs> And you're like, oh, wow, like that wasn't my initial reaction. Uh, how, how did that happen? You know what I mean? And it's like, isn't that the weirdest thing? Yeah. You know, you know this, kind of, this, this kind of reminds me of I was talking to, I was actually talking to a guy today and, um, 
and I think one of the things that happens too in the single scene is that we get so pigeonholed that if a guy or a girl doesn't fit that initial thing is um, we'll just automatically say no to a date with them. Well, they're not my type. Well, it's, it's kind of like, how are you going to know what's your type unless you go out and spend time with them? Yeah. Maybe he ends up not being your type or she or whatever. Yeah. And then there gets to be this frustration where, where women are saying none of the guys are asking out, women out on dates. And the guys are saying none of the girls will go out on dates. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and it becomes this, this thing, whereas we need to not be afraid to date. It's not, I mean, the activities are fantastic. I love them. I, I have so much fun at them, you know, but I think that we need to take the time to get to know each other because there's things that come out when you're on one-on-one -on -one that are not going to come out when you're in a group setting. In a group, yep. Absolutely. And I think that there's a, a big like hurdle is that a lot of the things right now, especially because of COVID have been online. And so mm -hmm. you're just looking at a photo. So it's all, it's about that initial attraction and you don't really get to know the person mm. at all, really, right? I mean, you can message back and forth, but it's like the whole swipe game. It's all in just that initial first impression mm. versus like, that's actually why I got off mutual and I went solely just to do like, at least on Facebook where you can interact, you can at least, you know, like yeah. see what type of posts they're commenting on and what they're saying and how they're reacting to things. Right. Then you at least get to know them a little more. Whereas the whole swipe game, I was like, nah, I, I, that is just not for me. I, I had a hard time with that. But now that things are back open, like there's going to be more, you know, church or, you know, church affiliated groups where you can get to know people mm -hmm. face to face, where I think is- yeah you know, the optimal scenario. So, cause you can see the personality and everything else. Right. Yeah. So. Yeah. I love uh, the quote by um, Elder Oaks where he says, life is kind of what happens when you're busy making plans for other things, you know? Mm -hmm. So for us, it, we can kind of start making these plans of, I want this, I want that, I want this in a person. And all of those things might be well and good, and some of them may be perfect, but I think really for me, uh, I took a little bit different approach and said, you know, this is what I want in my life. This is what I want to have. And if I find someone that's okay with those things and fits those things, then great. But I'm not going to compromise with and change who I am because I feel like that's, that's another way that people kind of What's the word I'm looking for? Probably not fail because that sounds too harsh, but maybe just don't do their due diligence when they're dating and they jump in so quickly like, well, I have found this person. They're fantastic. Everything's great. We're going to like go get married. And sometimes that works. Sometimes that's fantastic. Sometimes that's great. Mm -hmm. But I feel like all too often people have not taken the time to say, what's really going to be the best fit for me? And I'm going to be happy with those things and let come what may. And then let's take some time because it's just like those posts where somebody gets on there and says, this is me with no makeup. This is me in the morning. Take it or leave it sort of thing. Okay. Guess what, ladies? We got it. Like you don't wear makeup all the time. We know there are times when you don't have your makeup on, right? But that doesn't mean that's what we want your first impression to be, right? We all have mm -hmm. those first impressions, that honeymoon period, but getting past that and letting things kind of settle down and finding out what that person is really like, because at this point, let's face it, we've all got baggage of some sort, right? We've all had harsh experiences in life to some degree or another, and we've all got things that we're working on. None of us are perfect. I'm not even like close to being taken up to the city of Enoch or anything like that, right? Like they would laugh if they ever even suggested that. But, <laughs> you know, the thing is like, I've got my things I'm working on, I'm willing to work on them. And does it fit with somebody else? And if they're like, hey, you know what? I don't like the fact that you like silly guy humor and watch a show like Jackass or something. <laughs> I'm not okay with that. And I would want you to change. I might say, okay, you know, that might be something I could give up. Or I might say, you know what, that's who I am. Mm -hmm. I have an immature sense of humor. I'm sorry. It's just kind of the way I'm built. I like potty <laughs> jokes and things like that. 
You know, if I'm, if for me, that's something that's important, then I'm just going to keep rolling with who I am. And if they don't like it, okay. But what a freaking weirdo. Oh, you don't even know the half. Of it. <laughs> you don't even know the half of it. So, Hey, but some are looking for a weirdo. So yeah, yeah those are the women you need. <laughs> so I, you know, by I, the way, I was just going to say that, and we yeah, said this ahead, on, on the last show, but, um, I think anything that draws attention to myself and it's either love me at my worst or see me at my best and only love me for that. Like, so it's the Facebook where everything's perfect. My kids are always happy. I look gorgeous every day, you know, that kind of stuff. Or it's the opposite. It's the kind of like, I look like crap, and, but you better love me anyway, or yeah. you're out. And I, I think what it always comes back to is I want people who are balanced. And so, yeah, if you do a post or two and you don't have makeup on because you're swimming in the lake with your kid, I, that that's fine. You know, I, I like women who are real. Um, but, you know, or if if you like looking nice most of the time, and I like that too. I, I like that you take care of yourself and stuff. Do I want you to be totally lo lost in your looks? No. Do I totally want you to let yourself go? No. Um, I think most of us, if we were to ask ourselves, what do I really want? I, I think balance would probably be a really big thing. I, I mm -hmm. want someone that's just not extreme in one way or the other. Yeah. And they're comfortable in their own skin. Yes. Yep. I, sure. I worry about the self-deprecation of people thinking that somehow um, that's going to be endearing. I've seen that quite a bit where it's kind of the woe is me. I want someone to come into my life that's going to like make it better. And once I find that person, I'll be happy. You won't because okay. you're not marrying like a therapist that's going to take care of you and fix you. You're marrying a partner. <laughs> Unless Marry you're marrying John, of course. Yeah, marrying therapist <laughs> does not help at all. Just so you know. Um, yeah, for because the therapist one, he's not a therapist when he's with you, whether you think he is or not. Um, and the other thing about that too is a therapist is human, you know, he's yeah. or he or she. And the other, and the other part of that too is all bets are off, you know, when you get your emotions involved. That's why therapists don't do therapy with their family. It's mm -hmm. not because we don't love them; it's because we love them too much, almost. Mm -hmm. You know, and so, yeah. I think we marry people though, for those reasons, you know, oh, you know, I, I'm, my kids were really struggling with the divorce. And so it'd be good to marry a therapist, you know? And it's like, yeah, I don't know that that's a good idea. You, you don't want to look to a spouse to be their profession for you. No. Yeah. No. That was one thing that my therapist, like, you can't like, I can't teach my spouse anything at the time when we, he's, when we were going, you know, to do get counseling, like, you're not gonna be able to teach him anything and he's not gonna be able to teach you really anything because like, that's not the relationship. You're not teacher student. Like right. you guys are both equal. So you have to realize that you're not really gonna be able to teach each other. You come here, I'll do one-on-one -on -one or together or whatever, but don't be trying to do it to each other. Cause it's not gonna, it's not yeah. gonna help. Even if it's you're trained to do worse. it. Yep. It won't, it won't work, you know? So plus when I come home from a day of therapy, I don't want to do more therapy. <laughs> So. come on 24 7 in fact if i'm dating someone and i ever feel like tempted to do therapy there's yeah we're not going to keep dating you know i was going to say wouldn't that be like a massive red flag for you you're like uh <laughs> it'd be kind of like if you were like a plastic surgeon and you're dating someone the whole time you're like yeah oh, boy that nose, nose is just, job <laughs> yeah it's just about a centimeter off right up the middle and that's not, it's you just, you're a little off there yeah <laughs> it just wouldn't work i actually was i was watching a podcast um the other day and in it and i wanted to see if you guys think this is legit i don't know i thought it was a little extreme but you tell me it was saying that in in it the speaker was saying that 90 percent of men go after 10 percent of women and 80% of women go after 20% of men, leaving obviously the, the leftovers to have no one going after them. Do you think that's legit? What are your feelings on that? What do you think, Tanya? Hmm. Well, 
And do you really think the guys are that, the, that the single shallow? Scene I is so, <laughs> the single scene is so, the, the LDS single scene is so unique though too. It almost, you get those, I don't know how it is where you guys are, but, but you get those few guys that, yeah, all the women flock to. And, you know, me, that's like automatic turnoff. Like I can, cause like I said, I, I'm totally friends with them, but it's just like, I wouldn't be interested in them for nothing. And not because maybe they wouldn't be a good match for me. I'm not going to compete. So I, I can kind of see that. And, but I guess that's where we just need to like, I don't know, just be ourselves and learn to stand out. I don't know. So let me ask you another question. Oh, can I just say something to that? I yeah, don't know. See, that's the thing. I, that's one of the things where I wouldn't write them off. You know, people not being attractive to us is one reason, don't write them off for that. People being like, we feel like they're out of our league. I wouldn't write them off for that either because what can they do about that? You know, that doesn't mean they're, they're trying to get all that attention. It just may be that they just have a dynamic personality and women like it, but that doesn't mean they're out of my league. You know what I mean? And I think we do both. We sell other people short and we sell ourselves short. Yeah. True. And I wish, I wish we could just believe in ourselves and believe in each other. And, and like we said before, that there are some really amazing, beautiful, handsome people who are also really good hearted, amazing people. Mm -hmm. And just because they're being flocked around doesn't mean they don't have a great heart and that they can't see the good in people. And that maybe they are open to a relationship with someone that doesn't fit the mold. You know, I don't know. I, to me, it's worth a try anyway. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> I think that if you shoot yourself in the foot, you know, that, that isn't the best route to take. Like, I think that if you're attracted to somebody or if you find their personality meshes with yours, well, I think it's always worth a shot to mm -hmm. go for it. Might not happen, might not work out. But I think right. if you view that person as either not your type or, or maybe you're not their type and that's how you're viewing the situation. It's almost like you're hindering yourself, right? It's almost like, I kind of feel like, like on the posts and stuff where people again, post it without no makeup and just take me as I am. And again, literally laying in bed, they just woke up kind of post. I almost feel like they do that as almost like, I know you're going to reject this, so I'm going to say you're rejecting this because I'm laying here in bed without any makeup versus if I try to actually engage in a relationship with you, you might reject me for who I am. It's almost like they're going to give a reason for you to reject and they can just use that as their excuse. Oh, yeah, you didn't like me because I wasn't wearing yeah. makeup, you know, and right. that's kind of like their little shield, their little protection. So they throw out stuff like that just so that it stops people from getting to know the real them. And then what if they really are rejected? because mm -hmm. the person doesn't like who they are really. So I think sometimes they, people do that as like a, a way to protect themselves. Mm -hmm. Here. Like if I did have women flocking around me, I wouldn't want the woman I wanna be with to write me off because of that. Um, I, I honestly don't remember what that feels like. There was a time, but. Uh, <laughs> None of us are in our prime. <laughs> probably not, but you know, but that's the thing. I think all of us, if we look deep down, none of us want to be written off for anything. Like, uh -huh. don't write me off because I'm overweight, but don't write me off because I'm pretty either. Like, don't, just, please yeah. don't just write me off, you know? And maybe you have a chance. Maybe I'm looking at you like going, I wish she'd flock over to me. You know what uh -huh. I mean? But I, you know, I don't want to be rude to people who, you know, want to talk to me, you know? So uh -huh. anyway. You know, we run into that quite a bit here in Portland. It's kind of this strange phenomenon. So we have a lot of um, kind of women who will shave their head and kind of look like men and, you know, they're big and burly and everything. And then they say, well, guys don't want to date me. And so I hate men. It's like, well, you <laughs> basically make yourself look like a guy. And so they won't date you. And yeah. then you say, well, yeah, see, yeah, now yeah. they don't want to date me. Yeah. Yeah, it's like a defense mechanism or something. Like they just throw it up there because they know, okay, now you're going to reject me because I look like a dude versus. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm muscle bound and like, but you you reject me because you're shallow. Yeah. Right. Exactly. I reject you because you scare me. Yeah. I don't want you to hurt me. And I'm like a grown, I'm a grown man. And I do not to kick my trash in front of my kids. Right. <laughs> <It's> true. 
<laughs> so Tanya, in your own personal experience, when you go to these events, like a mid singles or something like that, what are your feelings for yourself as far as like, you see everybody going on and you just like, do you ever feel like, ah, I wish I was prettier, I wish I was shorter, or I wish I was this, or I wish I was that, or what is it that for you, you feel like holds you back from exuding that outward like confidence of like, hey, I am great and I'm a great catch. And if you don't like me, that's cool. I'll be the great, greatest catch for whoever is ready and right for me. What holds that's you a, back? That's a really good question because, you know, honestly, sometimes I'm like, I actually would make a really good wife. You know, I, I, I'm a good cook. I love to bake. You know, I, I, I keep a decent house. <laughs> You know, I, I work, I, I'm a hard worker, you know, I, I like list all these things and then I'm like, so, so that's a good question because it doesn't really necessarily come out. I don't think for me it's hard and maybe it's because I, I do tend to have more of a reserved personality in a big group setting. Mm. And so I tend to melt into the background does that make sense and I don't know if it's necessarily even really intentionally it's just like I think it's fear oftentimes when we're uncomfortable fear holds us back like we you know we're sitting here listening in on the conversation but we're not sure if we want to like chime in and 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 give our two cents um or so I I don't know I don't I know for me for a for some reason, and it's so funny, like for some reason I grew up with, my sister and I are only 15 months apart. And my older sister got the bone structure of my grandmother's side of the family where it's a very slender, petite bone structure. I got the Fulmer side of the family where, you know, farm stock, <laughs> I don't know. I know how to say Gosh. it, but I used, I, I had this image growing up that I was like fat. And I look back at pictures of me growing up and I'm like, I wasn't fat. Why did I think I was fat? You know what I mean? And, and, and I don't know exactly why that is. I think that's something, honestly, that has kind of stuck with me. And, um, and I think probably, and I, and I also, you know, I used to mountain bike all the time. And so, you know, I have long legs, but, but like I can build muscles in my thighs, like a guy almost, you know what I mean? And so I just used to feel like I was just this, and, and I'm like, I don't, I, I really wasn't. And so as you get older though, and you do put on a little weight after having five kids and, and, and whatnot, um, definitely going through periods of time of emotional eating. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to, I'm not going to say that I, I've always taken care of myself because I haven't. Um, but I think it's one of those things that gets stuck in our brain and, and then we allow it to hold us back because I see all these things where like, you see things got like guys like curvy women. I'm like, well, I'm kind of curvy. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I shouldn't <laughs> let it stop me. Right. But, but I still let it stop me. And um, so I think, I think for me, it's like, we just have to really get to that point where we're comfortable with ourselves. I'm comfortable with a lot of other parts of myself. Like I'm, I'm pretty okay with who I am as a person. Um, on that, that soul person on the inside, does that make sense? Yeah. But the other part, I think that, I think we have to just learn to love ourselves because isn't there nothing more attractive than somebody who loves themselves right. and not in that, like I'm in love with myself, prideful. Not the way. narcissistic type, but just the yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, just care for yourself. Like see, yeah. see the good in yourself. Well, see that you're a child of God and you have value. Yeah. Of, you know, like you are a child of God and you love yourself because of who you are, you know, your yeah. innate nature. So exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So. You know, I, we all know that God gives man weaknesses that they may be humble, right? And so we've mm -hmm. all got weaknesses to some degree or another. Um, the real trick is just to not let that weakness be self-loathing or self-hatred to any degree or another. Mm -hmm. I see that all too often of people who, well, I'm not good enough. And we all have something that, I mean, mm -hmm. we feel inadequate with, right? Mm -hmm. Whether it's mm -hmm. our body or our personality or both. 
um, we have stuff that we maybe kind of shrink back and hold back. And other people might look at that and say like, why, why do you let that hold you back? But in our own minds, we let whatever weakness be this huge stumbling block, block for us. So when you're in those moments where you're at a function or a, a mid singles event and you're not the life of the party, but there's the party going on, you kind of recuse yourself a little bit like, well, gosh, you know, they're all having fun. They're in the hot tub or whatever. If they're at Lava Springs or wherever anyone's going, it's not pronounced lava. So if anybody <laughs> in here is from Idaho, it is lava. So uh, if you're in those moments, I know there's a lot of people who just hold back because they're afraid of Gosh, I don't, if everybody's going to a swimming event, I don't want to go swimming because I don't want to, you know, put myself out there. But here's the thing. So what if other yep. people think you don't look mm -hmm. great in a swimsuit because the right person for you will think you look great and they are going to be attracted to you if you have that confidence. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm going to go have, go swimming because it's fun. I don't mm -hmm. care. I mean, for mm -hmm. me, I look like I'm giving Chewbacca a piggyback ride because I got so much hair on my back, right? Like, <laughs> I don't want to like necessarily go in the pool without like a massive amount of nair like being covered in me first and getting that over with. Like we all have in You just need to go get sugared, Everett. <laughs> get sugared, baby. It's, it's, it hurts, but it's worth it, you know? So, but you know what? The thing is, why pass up the fun? Because other people might be like, oh yeah. my gosh, whatever. I'm going to have fun with my life and the right person yeah. is going to see that I'm fun and I'm enjoying that and let them enjoy that. Right. And say like, I like that person. So what if he looks grotesque in a swimsuit, like, you know, <laughs> Bigfoot watchers are in the bushes with binoculars, checking him out to see if he's the guy. <laughs> right. So it happened. I don't care. Cause I'm having fun. And you yep. know, guys, Post it on Instagram because I am yeah. hairy. That's just the way I'm built. So it's we've it's spotted a, Bigfoot at Lava Springs. And that's right. That's right. We found it. <laughs> they have photographic evidence. Bigfoot. That is out, right? awesome. <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like, there's that that yeah. level of like she's just fun because she's out there and she's enjoying uh -huh. it. She doesn't care. She doesn't let those things hold her back. And when you've got that confidence and you're just like, you know what, I'm going to go for it because I want to have fun. And if 99 yeah. people are there and none of them like me, that's okay because I'm looking for that hundredth person anyways, and they'll come along eventually, but I'm going to enjoy my life and just let the pieces fall where they may. And, you know, so funny thing you mentioned swimming though, like on Saturday, there was a group of probably about 30 of us that went floating down, floating down the Boise river. Uh -huh. Um okay. I don't remember what anybody looked like in a swimsuit. Mm -hmm. We just had fun. Yep. So that's what it's all about. So you're absolutely right. You know, it's just mm -hmm. stop getting in your own head. And, and, and I know it's easier sometimes said than done, but, but I think if people just practice it more, you know, um, when I first started coming back out to singles things, just even just, a, it was just a few weeks ago, there was a, a bonfire and I'm like, I really want to go to this bonfire. And I had to convince one of my friends to go with me because like I said, that's how I, like, I think where I'm at now though, from where I was at even a couple weeks ago, I would totally go by myself now. Mm -hmm. You know, a couple weeks ago, I'm like, Ginger, you gotta come with me. Come on, and I'm like dragging her along and, and, and stuff. And we had a blast and it just, so I, I think that you've got to just, if you don't get out there at all, you're never gonna know anybody and you're not going to go out and you're going to miss out on so much. You're going to, you're going to be the one that's looking at the pictures on the, you know, on the events page, when somebody posts a picture afterwards and be like, Oh, that looks like so much fun. I wish I went. You just, mm -hmm. you just got to go. Yeah. I think there's something to be said for just showing up. Mm -hmm. Just, just yeah. show up, you know, don't try to impress anybody, you know, don't feel like you're being looked down on just, just presume I'm with good people. And I think people who are truly healed and connected to their true self, they're looking for those authentic true selves. Yes. Too. And just, you know, like that little gal I dated, it's just like she became really beautiful to me, you know, and I, mm -hmm. I still, we still, you know, have a friendship and I just think she's a great person. And 
and not a great person like, well, she's a really nice person, but I would never be attracted to that. No, like a really nice person who legit, I, um, there was nothing about how she looked, even though it wasn't my type that would have stopped me from marrying her. Like mm -hmm. it just wasn't supposed to happen between us. But, mm -hmm. um, and, but two things need to happen. I need to open my mind to people outside my type. And if I'm not their type, I need to open my mind to just being myself and trusting that if they're for me, their true self will come out, you know, yeah. that we'll meet each other. And all of a sudden, all that BS that we, uh, those criteria we put on will just all fall by the wayside. And can I add this? How many of us are on our knees praying, hoping to find a companion, right? And how many people are not doing anything about it? The Lord is not, mm -hmm. I, there was one period of my single life. I was just like, if I'm ever going to get married again, he's going to have to hit me with a lightning bolt because <laughs> you know what I mean? And, and I, I have, I have gotten to the point now where I'm like, no, I gotta be out there doing the work. The online thing just, just, it, I, it doesn't work for me. Like I just, it's, it's so hard to really get to know somebody and it's really easy to be shallow. For, for even me, like, I'll look at a guy and I'll be like, oh, he's got a flat bill hat on. Swipe. You know, something stupid like that, right? Yeah. So silly. Like, who, I might be totally missing out on, the, on, on, like, you know, the biggest thing. But um, but if we're not getting out, and that's, that's what brought me back after kind of taking a hiatus for a couple of years, you know, probably even a, I don't know. I was starting to get back into it right before COVID. And then COVID hit. And then so, but before COVID, when I was starting to get back into it, it had probably been a good year, year and a half. And I was like, no, I can't, I can't, I can't expect the Lord to put somebody in my life if I am not doing my part. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And he's not going to come knock on my door. Yeah. There's yeah. so many people that'll post and be like, you know what? I just know if I just sit here and wait, like the Lord has someone in plan for me and he'll make our paths cross or whatever. And, and they're very much, and they have great faith that it's going to happen, but I'm like, you might want to do some, you know, work on your, yeah, go to an activity <laughs> you know, right? or jump yeah. on a Facebook page or, or yeah. some of these guys need to ditch mutual and just get a ring doorbell so they can sit on their couch and see when they ring their doorbell, if they're there for them. Right. Like, eh, nah, not that one. We'll just pass. wait for the next ring to come along. I mean, I, I have passed on a lot of women in Utah Ute t-shirts and I'm feeling a little bad about that now Oh, and, and wishing maybe I could take that back. I'm sorry, you know, but I don't feel very bad about that, but I, I do feel a little but bit a bad. little bad. Yeah, I do feel a little like... bad about that. You know? um, I, why... I, I went to BYU. So, yeah, you know. that's why I got rid of mutual. I, I didn't like the swiping. Cause I'm like, I yeah. don't know these people. I've never did that, right. done that one. I'm talking about Facebook friending and yeah, I just. Yeah. Well, Facebook, I, I actually I, enjoyed the Facebook stuff. So that worked yeah. for me more so than. Yeah. Than the dating I app. do like that better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, just having that confidence in you and feeling like your life is going to be fun. Come what may, even if, because I'm, I'm a big proponent of timing, right? So Let's say Heavenly Father is like, I've got someone that'll be great for you. And I, this isn't to say that there's only one person for us, but you know, if there is someone that's going to be great for you coming along, they may not be ready yet, right? Like maybe they're going through something that maybe they're not even quite divorced yet or something. And they're in that process. You don't know, but maybe it's now, maybe it's 10 years down the road, maybe it's 30 years down the road, whatever that case may be. If you're confident in yourself, the journey is going to be so much more fun and enjoyable either way. So I love that. Uh, I don't know if you heard Elder Renlund's talk. We've talked about this here on the show before um, where he talks about his mission president. Have you heard about that recently? So um, Mind me. I think it was a BYU talk that was right before COVID. So maybe like fall of 2019. Um, but he talks about his mission president who was, I think, I want to say he was about in his 40s or so uh, when Elder Renlund was on a mission. When he became an apostle, uh, he had kind of known the story. His mission president had come home. 
uh, from his mission. And as Elder Renlund put it, he kind of got sick, got some sort of illness or something, and it affected his mental judgment. Whatever the case may be, he ended up leaving his wife, running off with another lady, basically leaving the church, all of those sort of things. And his wife was just, as you can imagine, devastated, right? So what does she end up doing? Well, she serves several missions. She stays faithful. She raises, finishes raising the kids and just kind of stays faithful in the church. And Elder Renlund says, fast forward, he's now an apostle. He goes to visit his ex-mission president's wife and learns, quote unquote, the rest of the story. 30 years later, this mission president that had ran off with this lady and gotten married to her and left his wife ends up divorcing the lady. I think the lady actually left him and he was now elderly and his first wife takes him back, but she had been single all this time and it just waited. And she's like, well, I'd never stopped loving him. And she had this powerful forgiveness in her, right? that allowed her to go through this whole event. But 30 years she waited, right? And she wasn't just sitting on her hands like, well, gosh, I hope the Lord sort of dropped someone on my doorstep. She went and served missions. She was faithful. She just, mm -hmm. the right person, quote unquote, didn't come along for her. And there's a lot of people who will get discouraged on something like that and say, I'm out, mm -hmm. it's not working. It's not uh, what I want right now. For some reason, the Lord's not, dropping them in my lap so I'm out of here. Imagine if she had done that at year 15, 20 or 25, right? She went through a long period where she just waited. And when the time was right, this all kind of came back together and they were able to get sealed, have a few years together before his health really failed. And then not long thereafter, I think he passed away, but Elder Renlund talks about the story, and I think he's spoken about it in a couple of different places. So if you just Google Elder Renlund's mission president, uh, it, he'll talk all about it. But it's, it's fascinating to hear this and just think, here's a lady who just stayed the course, lived her life, single mom, right, for a while. She finished raising the kids mm -hmm. and was happy and went and served missions and continued to stay faithful. Let the Lord work out the details. We don't know how that's going to look. We don't know what they're going to look like or when it's going to happen. Let the Lord worry about that. Just worry about you being happy and being the best you can be for that person who comes along who's ready for you. Because I'm a kind of a believer a little bit in Cupid, right? Like mm -hmm. I think that when the time is right, that little Cupid arrow, that might be the spirit mm -hmm. sort of nudging you saying, hey, yeah. look over there. There's that girl, right? Like, huh, she's that Tanya, she's pretty amazing. Like she is the girl for you and for the right person when you're happy and they're happy and healthy and the timing is right, that's going to all come together. Let the Lord worry about the details. Just worry about you. And you know, what's really attractive in somebody is that forgiveness that they've been able to forgive. You mean like not posting their hatred of men or women online? <laughs> yeah, something like that. <laughs> right yeah yeah that's that's kind of going the opposite direction there when they do that. right yeah i i think that if you if you're prayerful and if you truly do kind of hand this over to the lord do your part but hand over mm -hmm. to the lord and be like okay i trust you whenever it's time it's time um that will you will know at the in the moment when it happens that it's perfect timing because this isn't exactly the same but i struggle with infertility and so I had many years where I wanted to be a mom and I'd look mm -hmm. around and everybody had kids and a lot of kids, you know, going to church, 20 kids in one row and whatever. And I just couldn't grasp the fact that the Lord wasn't giving me a kid. I just, I just didn't understand. I was like, why? I just, that's such a, a, a desire, a righteous desire. Why would you mm -hmm. hold that back for me for years and years? Um, especially in the Utah culture, <laughs> I was a, an old mom when I finally became a mom, but the moment, the first one, cause our first two kids are adopted. So the first adoption comes through and I'm finally a mother. And I look back on all the other years, all the hard heartache, all of the why, and, and just 
struggling to understand. But in that moment, when it was finally, when it finally came about, I could look back and I could see that I didn't want any other way. Like that, I wanted her, like this was perfect, perfect timing. Yeah, it was hard, but you know what? If I would have had a kid somewhere along the line, I would never have adopted. And then that, she would never have been mine. And so mm-hmm. it's, it's that being patient while you wait, which is so hard. I mean, so, so hard, especially when what you want is such a righteous desire, right? And I think all of us want to be married. I mean, that's a righteous desire, want yeah. to share a life with someone. And, but I think in the moment when it's, if we've handed it to the Lord and we say, okay, I'm going to trust your timing on this. And if it comes about, then we'll be able to look back and be like, okay, this was all worth it. It's all good. And now I'm where I'm supposed to be, but it's tough. It's easier, much yeah. easier said than done, but it's tough, you know, but I think we'll all get to that point and have our moment, but. And what a shame though, if we, if we, um, I don't want to have any regrets. I mean, we all have, we all have t- things that we wish that we could change, but you know what? Hindsight's 2020, 20, you know, but I don't want to look back and, and let's say I get married in five years. I don't want to look back and be like, what was I doing for that? You know, 14 right. years, like I could have done this and this and this and this, but I was so obsessed and focused on getting, that's not me, but you know what I mean? If it was me, mm-hmm. um, so, so I hope that, that, that maybe people can learn that they need to live now as they're becoming their best selves. They need to go out and experience things. They need to be happy. Yeah. You know, again, being happy is attractive. And that's going to attract who you're supposed to be attracted. Right. So yeah. Learn how to do something new, you know, just pick something back up. Like I absolutely love dancing, grew up dancing, all kinds of dancing, um, anywhere from, you know, tap jazz ballet, that, that stuff clogging, then got into country dancing. I did Polynesian dancing. I love dancing. I gave it up for a lot of years other than coming and going to singles dances. Guess what I'm going to be doing soon. I met a friend in the singles and she's a dance instructor and we're putting together an adult tap dance class. I mean, how fun is that? You know what I mean? So, so that's the kind of thing that Tanya, I would totally join that class with you. If I was, if you were here, (laughs) (laughs) I I love that idea of surrender, but also like, like living your life through the surrender, you know, Uh and you know, like, and I think we need to pray for that. I, I I pray for patience, you know, although if it's going to be 30 years, I, I would pray that God would let me get hit by the truck tomorrow. (laughs) Um, and just, you know. yep. it's true. <laughs> it's true. Uh, I could maybe do five or 10. Like, I, you know, I'm not going to be too picky, but yeah, 30, man, just, you know, uh, I'm, I'm going to start skydiving if, uh, if I find <laughs> out. That's the, time <laughs> yeah. the more I skydive, the higher chance of getting killed. That's yes, right. Every day. <laughs> and I'm going to have my chute packed by like the youngest teenager at the facility. Right. <laughs> do your best, buddy. But you know, if you, do it if blindfolded, you up, please. I don't want you to feel bad if it doesn't work out. Oh, well, this know. is your first I, time here. Back. Pack mine. Yeah, <laughs> I'm. I'm ready to meet Jesus, man. It's okay. <laughs> oh, man. Sometimes I wonder if the Lord doesn't just sort of extend that time a little bit to just say, like, you know, this stretching will be good for you. Yeah. It's sort of like the spiritual analogy yeah. of going to the gym, right? Like we all want to get in shape and like muscular or whatever that might be with the as little work as possible that's just Mm -hmm. not how it works Mm -hmm. you know so yeah um let me ask you a question tanya and you don't have to answer this out loud but just kind of (laughs) food for thought right if someone were to come up to you and say tanya if you had to rank yourself from one to ten ten being like i'm a total ten i'm the best catch out there to a one, like nobody wants me. Like, where would you rank yourself, right? I just, I think if we're all being honest, we would probably fall somewhere on the scale of like, well, today I feel like a five or a six or whatever. I just want you to know that for the right person for you, you're a 10. If you find someone who thinks you're a five and treats you like a five, that is not the right person for you. That is not Johnny Lingo. No. 
Yeah, no. that's not your Johnny lingo. I'm a ten nope. cow wife. That's right. right. Yeah, that is so right. Yeah, girl. Yeah, there you go. I, you know what? I will say something too, and tell me, Tanya, if you feel this way. I think there's a certain level, and I saw this on, I think, a, a single site uh, or a page the other day. I think there's a certain level of healing that we must do ourselves between us and God. Like, I really do think there's a lot of value in some solitude and a lot of value in some walking our path alone. And for some of us, that's a year or two. And for some of us, that might be a decade or two. Um, I, th I just think God knows the right mix or the right timing for that for us. Um, but I also believe, you know, and I'm looking at myself and I'm saying, I have come so far in the last couple of years after what was really a hard time. Um, but I, I do believe that there, and maybe it's just 20% of the healing process or 10%, but the, I think the finishing touches will actually happen in a relationship with a really amazing woman, you know, and I don't feel ashamed to say that. I don't think it's wrong for us to say, I need another person to really complete the process. And so when I look at myself and I say, you know, I'm flawed, you know, I still have some pain. I still have some things to work out. Um, I definitely don't need any kind of toxic people in my life. Um, but I really can envision how, you know, even things like getting, like, I don't want to wait, let myself go. Uh, but I, I think it'll be like we know that lower stress, feeling loved, like that can have as much impact on your health as exercise and diet. You know, um, if maybe if I sleep better knowing that I'm not alone anymore, you know, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And I think when you add that all up, I do think like the sort of what seals the deal, it can be that really good relationship, you know? Um, and so I don't want to chase it. I don't want to depend mm -hmm. on it. I, I think on the one hand, I can say I've come a long way alone um, or with Heavenly Father helping me, but I don't, I'm not ashamed to say, but I think I could go even farther with somebody at my mm -hmm. side, you know, and I think that's good. That's a good thing to want in my life. So, and do you, how do you feel about that, Tanya? No, I absolutely agree with you because how uh, there are certain things we have to practice. Um, you know, there, there are trust issues that a lot of us have that when you come out of a divorce situation, um, and how do you learn how to trust again, if you never try and, and, and it mm -hmm. takes being in a relationship to, to test that and, and to, to learn how to do that. And, and honestly, the, the, the Lord's plan for us is to have an eternal marriage. His plan isn't for us to be alone. And so his plan is for us to be partners together and to, mm -hmm. to sometimes one of the partners is going to be having a bad day and the other partner can lift. And, and, but then the next day, maybe, you know, I'm going to have a bad day and my partner can lift me after I've lifted him the day before, you know, that isn't that what life is about. And mm -hmm. I think that we, we get so lost in that. Um, I think we get so lost in that romantic image of what we think marriage should be and and maybe what our marriage wasn't so what we want it to become you know or whatnot that we forget that we still really are we're, we're mortal beings going through a mortal experience and we need one another it we are not yeah. meant to do it alone yeah yeah absolutely do you like country music i love country music do you know who colin ray is oh yes have you ever heard that song, All My Roads? Oh, yes. That is the song, for anybody that hasn't heard it, that's the song that just kind of keeps coming to mind tonight. John's probably like, I hate country music so bad. I, I like Chris Stapleton. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> Other than that, I don't know if Chris Stapleton's as country as most, but he, he's more bluesy and country rock kind of. But yeah, I, I like country, though. Okay. I will go listen to Colin Ray singing that Many Roads song. All my roads, yep. All my roads. All my roads. Oh, every last one of them. Just YouTube them, yep. All my roads. But uh, for those who basically can't stand country music and will never listen to it, it, essentially the song is like this guy who just thinks he's um, completely off base and like he's just lost. And then one day he meets this person and he kind of looks back. And he realizes all these roads where he just felt like he was off and he was lost. Mm -hmm. He can now see them all coming together. All my roads now lead to this. And now it makes sense. Mm -hmm. But 
Totally. That's yeah, what I, we I love the idea. Yeah. Like God, God bless the broken road that talks about it too. Yep. You know? yep. Mm -hmm. Same, same type of thing. So yeah. it's uh, when that time happens though, I mean, my ways are not your ways, neither are your ways, my ways kind of thing with the Lord. He's got his own plans for us and he knows what's best. And when that's going to happen, if we just stay the course, get our house in order, do what yeah. we're supposed to do and just stay the course and be happy. And those things will come. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that can be so hard. If we're on a 30 year journey, like Elder Renlund's mission president's wife, that's got to be tough. I can't even imagine, but mm -hmm. she did it. And in the end, it was all worth it. Mm -hmm. So I love the analogy too of a cake. Have you ever heard this one before where it's marriage is like baking a cake and some people say like, well, you know, you're the wet ingredients and she's the dry ingredients You mix them all together and you can make this tasty cake. <laughs> it should be more of I'm the cake she's the frosting independent we're great but together mm -hmm. we're even better right only if so. i can be the chocolate frosting that's right <laughs> I yeah i actually i prefer to be the chocolate cake but hey <laughs> yeah so less than i have this discussion all the time this debate which i'm of course right about that white cake is better with chocolate frosting <laughs> less, doesn't and, and you know what if it doesn't work out i mean if i'm carrot cake and you're chocolate frosting it, maybe it's not good but we're still both good Right. Yeah. Yeah. Still I, take that back. I take right. that back. I want to be carrot cake. That's what I want to be. <laughs> See, that, that's my birthday that cake every yes. year. Man. That was carrot cake with the cream cheese frosting. Yes. That's, the, mm. Mm -hmm. that's the best. Mm, snap. Yeah, you guys lost me there. <laughs> <laughs> but it is a good point. You know, not all cakes are meant to have the same things. Like not all cakes right. are meant to be together. So, mm -hmm. but I can promise you that if you do the right things, that whether sooner or later, you're a 10 and someone's going to recognize that. I love that saying, uh -huh. wrong person, you'll never have much work, but to the right person, you'll mean everything. Yeah. So, and and oh, you know, so if, I make my, if I make my frosting with salt, um, there's mm -hmm. no cake alive that I'm gonna be good with. You right. Know? And that's what, mm -hmm. but that's my responsibility if I'm the frosting. That's actually really, that's yeah, deep. that's deep. Like that. Thanks, man. That's I can deep. go deep, deep on this kick here tonight. Yeah, I like that. Um, because I'm a little salty. Yeah, next thing you know, we'll be talking about sprinkles and all kinds of things, <laughs> cherries and cherry on top. <laughs> Whether we have two layers or one, yeah, that's right. Yeah, uh, yeah, Tanya, I, I just think that you've got a great head on your shoulders on this whole thing, you know what needs to happen, but sometimes knowing that is different than like living that. No, yeah. Absolutely. So you're a 10 for that right person and just go live your life. Like I am the happiest 10 ever. And that 10 will come along when they're ready. So, yeah. Well, and here's the thing you. The, you have a spirit about you, Tanya, um, that I think is just really refreshing. And I mean, it's fun. It's, um, positive and even when it it isn't super positive it's it's like real about that and just acknowledges mm -hmm. that yeah i struggle and i don't know i just feel like people like you are going to be just fine you're going to find it you know and because i find myself in my own heart with with people like you where it's like wow that is the kind of person that really can be uh, is just super attractive um, and I think that's not just a reflection of you. It's the reflection of me and, and other men and women who are healed and get in the right mm -hmm. place. We start to see people differently. And I just see you as you're, you're a great catch. You know, um, I really believe that. So, yeah. It, I'm, I'm you know what I want? I want to say something though, too, because like, you know, th this is where I am nine years later. You know what I mean? Like you guys are saying this mm -hmm. nine years later. Um, I think that there's probably people out there listening that um, that want to be there right now. 
Mm -hmm. um, if that makes sense. But I just want to say it took me a long time. I mean, it's been nine years. It took me a long time to get to this place. That's a good point. Um, I, you know, having five kids ages, let's see, because I had my kids, five kids in seven and a half years. So they're like, boom, boom, boom. So my youngest was seven and my oldest was, um, I think he was just about 15. Um, and going through parenting by yourself, you know, even, even calling to ask for, Hey, what do you think about this? Oh, you're the one there. You take care of it. You know, parenting by yourself is, is difficult. It's, it's not, mm -hmm. it's not easy to do. Um, I, I lived on a shoestring for years and years and years and years. And so there was a lot of stress and a lot of worry about finances right. And that, and that kind of sabotages thing, it just, your healing and yeah. And, and it and it took it's over, totally but I'm to a place now, um, and I'm not trying to brag, but uh, you know I went back to school, I finished my education, I got a degree, you know, um, but I had you know I had a son with special needs, and um, worked through a lot to get to where I am now, and I just actually um, purchased the home I've been renting for the past, even before my divorce. So, you know, and, and I'm, and I'm not, and I'm just throwing that out there. Like there's a lot of time. things that gets you to yeah. a point where you feel that confidence. You feel like you're okay. Well, it shows just, that you just didn't sit back and wait. Yeah. Like you were still living despite mm -hmm. if it was hard or not, you were still making progress in your own life as a single. And mm -hmm. I think sometimes singles tend to just shut down and stay right where they're at until they get, they feel like they need someone else to move forward. Mm -hmm. And I think that as John was saying, like in between the time when we're um, divorced or whatever, and when we find someone, we have to keep living. We have to keep mm -hmm. moving forward or else, I mean, it's a, it's a waste of time and we won't be prepared and be the person we need to be when the time comes, if we're not finding happiness in the moment you know, and, and if I could give anybody advice to serve, keep serving, serve at church, serve it. I'm a big time, uh, like a marching band groupie. <laughs> <laughs> so I served on the, mar the band parent board because I, I love being involved in my kids' lives. And, you know, I was in PTO and this and that. So get out in your community and serve. I know it's hard. I know that, that our time is so stretched thin when you're a single, but if you get out there, I promise, I promise, like, like I have a strong testimony of getting out there and thinking about other people and serving other people. And I promise if you do that, you will feel more connected with um, even the married people in your ward, your leaders, everybody, um, people in your community. It's so important that, that we find, even if it's just a little thing, like once a month, go to the temple, serve in the temple, wherever you can find time and serve. It's so important. Yeah, absolutely. I was in the marching band and we never had groupies. So I think that's pretty <laughs> awesome, man. Like, where did, I don't know where you went to high school, but that sounds really cool to me. But, oh, yeah. like I follow my kids were in the marching band. Oh, oh, oh that, yeah. Well, I guess we had those groupies. So I, I go to all the competitions Moms, and, you know, and sit there and pick apart the other marching bands. That's awesome. <laughs> nice. Well, yeah, definitely. It sounds like, and one thing to kind of just clarify here, your journey was nine years to get to where you're at now. Your journey's definitely not over. None of ours is, right? No. Till, mm -hmm. till the final bell rings, whenever that might be for each of us. But uh, everyone's going to have kind of their different thing that they have to go through to heal, yeah. to overcome, to come off of a bad relationship. Um, it might be nine years. It might be nine months. It might be 30 years. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, the mm -hmm. Lord knows, and probably depending on what we went through, that plays into all of it. But um, if we're focused on being happy, fixing things with ourselves, I can't change my ex. I don't know that anybody can change their ex, but I see a lot of people that keep trying. Yeah. And if you change yourself, work on yourself, be happy with yourself, 
those pieces will fall into place. The right pieces will fall into place. Don't rush it. Don't try and find a simple substitute to fix you and get somebody else in a relationship that's going to complete you and make you whole. Fix yourself, get your house in order, do what's right, serve like you said, and just wait for the Lord to bring those pieces together. Mm -hmm. He knows how bad we all want to be in a solid relationship that happily ever after. He gets it and he's not gonna leave us, you know, hanging any longer than is necessary, but he will get us the right thing if we do what's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and I think I see all of that stuff in you, Tanya. So I, Absolutely. you know, and uh, yeah. Does that mean the guys are going to be like beating down my door you, now? You know what? They're going to start flocking to you and they're, and you're the love of your life. It, we're we're going to hope that he doesn't go, oh, I don't have a chance with her. And so exactly through it, you know, see, yeah, yep. so, I get it. I get it. Yeah. You know, at the very least though, Tanya, you're going to be happy. And people are going to see that and be like, I want to be like her. You might be surprised that some of those yeah. eye candy girls that you think, man, every guy flocks to her. Yeah. They see you happy and they're going to be like, I wish I was more like that. Yeah. It's, it's surprising. You would think that there's no way they're going to envy me. They absolutely do. Everybody's got their struggle. Nobody's perfect. And when you get to somebody who thinks they've got it all put together and they're perfect and they're like the eye candy and everything else, run. Because that is not the person you want to be around. They're going to be around. right. Right. So, yeah. For real. For real. Yeah. All right. Well, we're kind of uh, over time here, but Tanya, thank you so much for being on. This was fantastic. Yeah. And thanks, John, for being here. You are like, I just love having this group. This was a great discussion tonight. I wish yeah. we could just kind of keep doing this, but, uh, you know, I don't want to have like a three hour long podcast. I feel like we can keep digging here and get into the audience. And we'll, we'll never be able to put the genie back, man. Right, right, right. Yeah. yeah. So thank you very much. And uh, those of us who are here for the first time or those in the audience that are here for the first time, if you're watching on Facebook, go ahead and join in. If you'd like to be part of the after party show. This is the part where we kind of stop the live recording on Facebook, stop recording on the computer, and we just open it up for everybody to kind of come on and have an open discussion. So.